So, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Uh, I hope everyone is uh, safe and well. I'll just uh, reiterate the house rules or Zoom etiquette that that uh, I gave uh, last week. So firstly, once again, please be reminded that all reading and other learning materials shared with you throughout the duration of this course is shared exclusively to the eligible participants and auditors of Ethics in Action. Please do not reproduce and or share these materials outside the group without the explicit permission of the researcher, uh, which is Dr. Franz Cortez, the course facilitator, Dr. Rochi Matienzo, our resource persons for this series and or the staff. The Zoom credentials are likewise shared only to the eligible and accepted participants and auditors of Ethics in Action. Just the same, please do not share or distribute the meeting links and passcodes outside the group without the explicit permission of the researcher, course facilitator, resource persons, and or staff. Thirdly, kindly change your display name to your real name. So to do that, just click on the participants button below. Hover your pointer over your name and click on rename. Once recognized for the first time, kindly state your institutional affiliation as well. Fourth, uh, please keep your microphones on mute until you are recognized to speak. Fifth, additional questions, comments, and or points of engagement that you wish to raise will be entertained via the chat box. Alternatively, you may use, you may use the raise hand uh, function in Zoom and wait to be recognized. So that's Alt-Y for Windows and Option-Y for Mac. We're expected to lower your hand once you have made your question and or comment. Sixth, you are encouraged but not required to turn on your cameras when you join the meeting and especially when you are recognized to make your questions and or comments in order to contribute to a more personal feel of this dialogical environment. Seven, this meeting is being recorded. By agreeing to stay, you consent to be part of this recording. Lastly, for technical concerns, kindly send any of the staff a private message. So that would be Ms. Gia Nagbisit, uh, myself, and Ms. Julia De Castro. You may likewise send an email to secretariat at ustphilosophy at ustphilosophycpe.org. So, yun lang po muna. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rainier. Si Rainier po ay isa sa ating mga, ano, mga faculty, po, faculty member ng uh, Philosophy Department of UST. Uh, also together with uh, the technical staff is uh, Ma'am Gian Carla Agbisit. She is also a member of the Faculty Department, uh, Philosophy Department of uh, uh, the University of Santo Tomas. Uh, muli ako po si Franz Giuseppe Cortez. Welcome po sa ating uh, ikalawang web forum on the course Ethics in Action. Uh, this is of course uh, sponsored by the USD Philosophy Department uh, with uh, uh, funding coming from uh, the Commission on Higher Education. So, uh, kumusta na po kayong lahat? I hope you are doing fine, kahit na sa kabila ng ating mga dinanas na kalamidad. Uh, maybe at this point, uh, Sir Rochi, uh, do you have a simple ano, activity for our yeah. participants? It's uh, not that activity. We just want uh, to know lang po uh, in a word or in a, a word or phrase. Um, I'll be asking you po to write uh, on something dun po sa ating chat box. So instead of the usual uh, roll call, this time may we uh, just uh, know po your location and then a, a phrase or a word or two that will best describe your situation right now. Sige po. Um, it's located on the... Uh, so pinakababa po, it says their chat. That's where you can uh, insert again your location and a word or a phrase that best describe your uh, situation for right now. Sige po. So we'll just wait for a few, hmm. one minute siguro, no? partner? Not, uh, konti lang yun, partner. Saglit lang yun, tingnan natin. Sige po. Can we uh, know po?
meron na dito sa chat room natin eh kaya lang yung kanina no. Um, yeah, greeting from Antipolo si Hernan is from Antipolo pala. Medyo ang result, di ba, partner? Medyo ano? Nanali din. Oo. Oh. Oh. Nung Talban, yan yata yung San Mateo ba? Oh, Rodriguez. And Makina is uh, badly hit. Oh. Oh, ito si Erwin from Kabakan, Cotabato. All is well. Yan, medyo na-spare kayo nga uh, this time. Oo. Oh. Southern part, no? Mm-hmm. Jan Paul, look at this partner. San Miguel Bulacan, roofless. Oh. So Jan Paul, miss yung, miss mong yung bahay. Bahay niyo ba? Mm-hmm. Talagang natanggal ang mong roofless. Mm-hmm. Antipolo, si Hernan, mahina ang signal at internet. Okay. Ako po ay uh, tubong risal din. At yung aking mga kamag-anak doon, wala pang kuryente. <laughs> Kaya hirap din sila mag-charge. At uh, the signal is also intermittent, no? Uh, Ilocos Norte, overwhelmed. Wow. Malakas din ba sa taas? Sa Norte ata, no? Uh, parang uh, ngayon yung, yung pag-open ng dams kasi napuno, parang sila ngayon ang affected. Uh, Kagayan, Isabela, parang uh, sila ngayon ang pinaka-latest na ano, uh, na-apektuhan. Okay. Wow. So, po dyan, sa Norte, uh, Romel, Cagayan de Oro City. Cagayan de Oro City is uh, uh, nasa South, no? So, feeling, feeling excited. Yeah, uh, GRB. Uh, yeah, I remember you, GRB. Doon sa uh, nire-review namin yung mga questions. I think you also submitted some interesting... GRB partner replied to your question. Yung mismong bahay nila ang na, uh, natanggalan ng lubong. Mm-hmm. He said Yes. Si Gab, uh, Gabriel from Caloocan, water supply ang problema. Uh-huh. Eh, classic na yun eh, sa NCR. <laughs> Basta may nila. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, San Mateo. Si ating uh, kasamahang si Joseph from San Mateo. Ayan, I, I think uh, apektuhan din sila. Richard, uh, saan ikaw uh, located? At saka, kumusta dyan? Uh, Ruben, uh, sabi ni Ruben, nasa Southern Leite siya. Happy and safe. Yan, good for you, no? We're happy, we're glad. Si Aaron is from Vegan. Uh, everything is fine and well. Nadyan din yung ating isang uh, kasamahan ngayon, no? si Dr. Paking, I guess. Uh, in, in, in Ilocos, Sur. Joseph. No, jo- Joseph partner, no Wi-Fi connection. No Wi-Fi connection. Uh, Pero mas okay na yan, partner, kesa no Wi-Fi connection, no? <laughs> At saka baka nakadata si, nakadata si, ano, nakadata si, si Joseph. Sige, just uh, try, uh, try your best to be with us, no? Kahit audio man lang. Yan. Um, Ito, si, si Alex ay galing sa Pasay. Nagulungkot siya para sa kagayan at Isabela. Galit sa mga nagbubulag-bulagan. Matapang ang, ang uh, expression ni Alice ngayon. Pero may dahilan. No? May dahilan bakit kailangan uh, ganito ang nararamdaman. Uh, partner, kung makita mo yung nasa Facebook na yun, iyan ang, ang feed. Punong-puno yung feed na mga rooftops na lang yung nakikita. Uh, at saka ang, ang mga shoutout ngayon, no? ang mga status is... Uh, ilabas ang flashlight yun medyo ano yun ha? kasi rescuers cannot find them na or maglag, magkalampag ng kaldero something like that ganun na yung tipo ng ng, ng conversation sa Facebook ngayon no? so yeah uh, we're lucky uh, nakajoin pa rin tayo no? but then again uh, uh, we have something uh, also for them uh, partner mamaya i-announce nila kasamang Rainier no Ito, si, 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 ano, si PJ, ano, water supply sa Paco, Manila, NCR nga, no? Mm-hmm. Uh, from Zambales, surviving so, and hoping, baby. Zambales, uh, Central Luzon. Oh. Ito, si Gerald, the uh, partner is from Santa Mesa, having problems with the internet. <clears throat> Yan. Si Richard, uh, safe and okay, si Richard. Si Chris, uh, water problem din, no? Kaloocan. Partner, dito sa atin, uh, last two days ago, mahina ang tubig. 
Mm-hmm. And then kahapon, medyo may kulay pa yung tubig. No? Kulay brown, no? Kulay brown kahapon. So... Uh, hindi mo na ako naglaba kahapon. <laughs> Kasi uh, medyo may kulay. Ayan. Uh, binangonan si uh, Richard pala. No? And he's okay. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Glad to know. Uh, partner, si Joseph Dexter ay sa uh, Lasal, Bacolod. Sunny, but connectivity is a uh, challenge. Okay. Okay. Hindi ka nag-iisa, uh, uh, Joseph, no? Uh, from uh, Naifa Bakaraya. I hope I pronounce your name correctly. Uh, of MSU, Jensen. Sorry po, medyo super hina na yun. Aha. So, Mindanao State University. Sige, huwag po kayo mag-alala. Uh, ito po ay being recorded and the purpose of which is para nga po dun sa ating mga kasamahan na uh, hindi masyado malinaw ang connection. Don't worry, we will uh, send you the link po. Uh, papadalan po kayo ni kasamang Rainier para po dito sa mga kopya ng uh, ating gagawin. Pero uh, join with us, stay with us. no? Uh, kaya po natin ito. Uh, meron pang humabol partner, pakibasa ka, si Peter. Okay, oh, si Peter mm-hmm. from Dumaguete. All is well with connectivity issue. Okay. That includes connectivity issue siguro. So all is well. Mm-hmm. That's good for you, Peter. Na all, sabi nga nila, na all. Sana all. <laughs> Sana all. <laughs> Oo nga. <laughs> Sige. So uh, partner, maybe we can start, no? Uh, ano ba yung plano mo? We will uh, some... Siguro, uh, partner, sa puntong ito, we can uh, ask uh, everybody else <clears throat> uh, as a form of our uh, invocation uh, to spend muna a, a minute. I'm requesting a minute of silence no, para dito sa nangyayari sa atin. Hindi lang itong bagyong na nakaraan, ano ba itong bagyong ito. Meron pa tayong Rolly, uh, Kinta, no? Five days daw yan, partner. Five days, uh, I'm sorry, five weeks na consecutive na nangyari yan. No? Not mentioning yung COVID. Sige po. So I'm enjoying, uh, I'm, I'm uh, inviting everyone to spend a moment of silence uh, for those victims and to those who are right this very moment are still struggling and uh, fighting for their lives. And also those who have lost properties uh, and, and lives as well. Uh, isama na din po natin yung intentions ng ating mga mahal sa buhay at saka yung mga victims ng uh, COVID-19 at uh, mga frontliners. So may I request po, no, uh, partner with permission, Professor Dakanay, so we will have a minute of silence. So, maraming maraming salamat okay. po. Okay, so partner? Yeah, uh, maybe we will flash, uh, Rainier, can we flash our uh, announcement? Okay. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Apo. Thank you. Uh, So yung philosophy department po ng UST ay uh, meron po kaming uh, ginagawang fundraising campaign ngayon for the typhoon victims. Uh, this is already posted in the Facebook account of the department. We are also asking uh, everyone, the participants, if uh, yeah, kung meron din po kayong gustong uh, hingin uh, o gustong i-post dito na announcements or Uh, concerns regarding the calamities, the victims of the calamities that we are having right now or we just had, uh, you may do so. You may also announce. So right now, yung nakikita nyo po is our fundraising campaign. The information can be found there. But of course, you can easily visit, you can access the uh, philosophy department's uh, Facebook account for the details. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, Rainier. So maybe we can now formally start. No? So muli magandang umaga po. Ako po si Franz Giuseppe Cortez. This is our second web forum on the Ethics in Action course. And for the second forum, 
our main topic is business and ethics. Uh, for many students of business management, for many students of business ethics, actually, uh, they will find it and they will, they will always say that uh, business and ethics cannot be married. Hindi daw pwede pagsamahin. Sabi nga, ay, business ethics is an oxymoron. Ano, ba, ano nga ba yung oxymoron, uh, partner? Yeah, contradiction. No, It's a contradiction. Natatawa na si Professor Rata ka na yun. It's a contradiction in terms. Parang ano ba yung mga contradiction in terms? Like uh, defining silence or happily married siguro. Uh, hindi, yung happily married joke na lang yun. Kasi sabi nung iba, if you are happy, then you are not married. And if you are married, then you cannot be happy. Of course, it's just a joke. Uh, but business ethics, you know, for many people, for many business management students, uh, they consider it as uh, oxymoronic. If you are into business, then let's forget about ethics. And if you want to talk uh, about ethics, then do not go into business. But uh, for today, uh, uh, makakasama po natin ng isang uh, uh, kilala sa field ng business ethics, spe uh, specifically on the field of uh, uh, social entrepreneurship, and I will ask my partner, Rochi, to formally introduce our resource person for today. Partner. Salamat. Um, ang ating uh, resource speaker para sa araw na ito no, ay si uh, Professor Marie Tadisa M. Dakanay, PhD. She is the founding president of the Institute for Social Entrepreneurship in Asia. ISEA no? or ISEA and uh, she is also a pioneer in social entrepreneurship research and education in the region. She was the first uh, Asian to receive the Outstanding Social Innovation Thought Leader of the Year 2019 award by the uh, Schwab no? Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship and the World Economic Forum. She has authored a number of articles and uh, books on social entrepreneurship, among them, Social Enterprises and the Poor, Transforming Wealth, uh, na published ito noong 2013. Under her leadership, Isaya spearheaded the research and crafting of stakeholders' version of a proposed legislative measure in the Philippines on poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship uh, present. Uh, Dr. Dakanay and uh, Isaiah also catalyzed the setting up of the poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship coalition in 2012, which is leading lobby efforts to enact the proposed law in both houses of Philippine Congress. She also led the action research and the development of women's empowerment, livelihood and food. So we leave uh, uh, food. It's a multi uh, stakeholder platform that is promoting a set of benchmarks and guidelines for inclusive recovery and building back uh, fair. We Live uh, Food is a uh, collaborative platform led by social enterprises that is engaging governments, multilateral agencies, and the business sector. It was launched on September 16, 2020, in a conference uh, co-convened by ASEA and uh, UNESCO. We Live Food is... Uh, meant to contribute to the process of putting back on track the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals characterized by uh, UNESCO as already failing before the COVID-19 pandemic. Our uh, speaker, Dr. Dakanai, holds a Master's uh, in Development Management with distinction from the Asian Institute of Management in 1996 um, and a PhD in Organizational and Management Studies from Copenhagen in Denmark, Business School in Denmark, back in 2012. So friends, colleagues, uh, dear students, uh, allow me to, allow us to welcome our 
uh, revered uh, speaker, uh, Professor Marilisa M. Dakanay, PhD. Uh, hello, uh, kumusta kayo lahat? Uh, Rochi, thank you. And uh, Franz and the whole of uh, the, the participants, no? faculty participants from various parts of the country. I see that you're coming from uh, northern Luzon up to Mindanao. Yeah? And so uh, I'm happy that you are all safe and are able to join us today. But I do appreciate that maybe some of your participants may not have been able to make it because of the grave uh, situation that we're faced by some of our uh, from some of the people who are in some parts of the country that were greatly flooded, yeah? Now, until now, actually, rescue operations are still ongoing. So uh, I'm happy to be here with you, and I hope, I look forward to a fruitful discussion. Thanks. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, partner, maybe we can start, no? So, simulan natin sa medyo light question for Professor Dakanay. Hello, mm -hmm. ma'am. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Anong una, light question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is light, but uh, not so light probably. So, uh, ma'am, ang una po namin tanong sa inyo is, uh, why social entrepreneurship? In other words, who are the people or what are the events that contributed to, you know, inspired you to, ano, to enter into this uh, uh, field of social entrepreneurship? Yeah. I first learned yeah, I first learned about social entrepreneurship when I was a master's student at the Asian Institute of Management. Yeah? It became my favorite subject because it tackled an area of work that as because at the time I was already in the operations department of the Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement, which is one of the big NGOs at the time. And one of the main issues that we were facing was, uh, you know, the economic upliftment of the poor. No, uh, the Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement then was working with farmers, fishers, indigenous people, and the women and youth of these sectors. And uh, ang pinuproblema namin on field uh, was actually how do you actually uh, engage farmers, fishers, indigenous people, and uh, the women in these sectors. Um, in a way that would uplift their economic lives, yeah? So uh, I think economic uh, development um, has always been a weakness of many development agency interventions, no? Uh, for example, provision of health, provision of uh, education, as well as um, you know, engagement in environmental protection have been very successful, but uh, engagement with the poor in relation to uh, economic development has not has been mixed, yeah? So when I learned about social entrepreneurship at the Asian Institute of Management where I had my master's, I actually was drawn into it. And when I returned to the Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement after my master's, I actually assisted in the implementation of a social entrepreneurship program there. And we started to um, not only develop cooperatives, but also different um, social enterprises, like we set up, for example, a rural bank in mm -hmm. uh, for the for the poor, no? and it's still there at, the, at least until now. No, it's a rural bank that would provide financial services to cooperatives as well as to um, small and medium enterprises that would service the agricultural sector and farmers. Yeah, and then um, we also set up um, other uh, interventions, like until now, no, there. Uh, I used to be the branch manager also of Bataan, the Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement in Bataan. And we, uh, we helped to set up a federation of fishers called Subpo, no? um, Samahan at Ugnayan ng Pangisdaan sa Orion. No? Uh, but one of the towns here in Bataan where I am now, no? I actually live here now. And, um, and in that, that, that intervention actually engaged, we engaged the fishers to take control of the fishing grounds and co-management was implemented with the local government unit of the community-based coastal resource management program. And um, the fishers started to engage in economic activities such as not only the protection no, of the fishing grounds, but because they were already getting better fish catch, they actually engage in trading and marketing of fish. Yeah. So uh, we started all these initiatives, but then also of course um, I, 
I went to keep a long story short, after my stint in PRRM, when I was, I became the the DAR, uh, I, I became a manager of a big ADD project in DAR, the Department of Agrarian Reform, um, during the time of Secretary Horacio Morales, Hor Secretary Horacio Morales, who was then the Secretary of the Department of Agrarian Reform, and who was the PRM president when I was in PRM. He brought me into DAR to manage this big ADB project. And we, uh, we found that social entrepreneurship was a very good framework for organizing uh, for the economic upliftment of agrarian reform beneficiaries. Yeah? So, and, um, so even after, when beyond, you know, beyond uh, DAR, um, I, the, as you know, a lot of uh, political movements happened and then I left government and then I was actually invited to become a professor at the Asian Institute of Management, no? where I was asked to set up a master's in entrepreneurship for social enterprise development. So full circle. Ako, eh. So I came from the NGO, um, uh, the NGO sector, and then I went to government, and then I went back to academia, this time to teach social entrepreneurship. No? And it has been a very, since, the, uh, since 2000, I've been researching and teaching social entrepreneurship. So I started as a practitioner, and I actually am now um, a very um, committed <laughs> um, scholar, in a sense, in social entrepreneurship, but also an action consultant for many social enterprises because I coach uh, many social entrepreneurs. And the faculty, and the, you see the, the kind of program that we implemented in the Asian Institute of Management, which is actually the same program that the uh, Ateneo Graduate School of Business is actually implementing, is a masteral program that admits uh, social entrepreneur practitioners to become, uh, to become students. And then it's a real-time course where if for one and a half years, you learn about social enterprise development and management, and you graduate on the basis of improving the performance of your social enterprise, and also doing a five-year five-year strategic plan. Yeah? And it's been a very satisfying journey because I think I've been able to um, impact uh, on um, the lives and livelihoods of our people um, before directly, no, because I, we were organizing cooperatives and rural banks, but now. I'm actually a coach to many social entrepreneurs, and it's been a very important. Uh, I mean, I I am I'm I continue to be committed to social entrepreneurship because I think it is the way to go in terms of uh, resolving many of the social economic issues and problems like poverty, inequality, and sustainability, not only in the in the marketplace but also in the economy as a whole. Yeah. What about uh, ma'am? Uh, what about uh, specific persons? May po ba mga specific persons who inspired you to uh, to uh, to uh, work in the social enterprise? Uh, well, yeah. Um, I mean, the my first guru, <laughs> the person I consider to be my guru in social entrepreneurship, is Professor Eduardo Maraton. No? Okay. He actually wrote the first book on social enter social entrepreneurship and enterprise development way back in 1994 when social entrepreneurship was not was not was, was not fashionable yet yeah uh, and he wrote a book and that became actually the textbook that we had for that um, for that uh, elective that I had in development management when I had my master's and that was my favorite course in the Asian Institute of Management no? so he was one of those who inspired me but another person who inspired me was uh, of course Horacio Morales and Isagani Serrano they were the president and vice president of the Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement and they engaged us in a process of you know um, innovation uh, they they uh, they actually worked with us to imagine a future uh, of sustainability you know, and fairness. Yeah, and uh, we experimented in upland, lowland, and coastal communities um, strategies for sustainable area development, which included social entrepreneurship and enterprise development. So those are some of the uh, I think um, some of the people who have inspired me to to work on where I am, I mean, in terms of uh, social entrepreneurship. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, partner, maybe we'll ask uh, one of our participants. Yeah. yeah. Ano bang nakaka-inspire yung uh, 
uh, sharing ni ni Ma'am Lisa no um, talagang ito yung tinutukoy mo partner na practicals no uh, you don't have to make use of the word ethics kasi ginagawa na ni Madam no and uh, ever since ano uh, yung buhay ni Ma'am is actually towards alterity nakakatuwa no Um, marami tayo as educators marami tayong makukuha dito no? so how to put these things the things that we teach in the classroom into action by the way educator din si Mabisa no? siguro uh, partner magandang uh, ipasok dito no? kaugnay nitong uh, sharing ni Madam earlier uh, maybe we can ask nadyan ba si, uh, kasam- si, si Enrique Enrique I, uh, may I request for you to First, to daily address this uh, question to our speaker. Are you there? If 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 not, uh, we can we can. Uh, Hello. Enrique, yeah, you. Meron Hello kang po. katanungan, opo. Yung uh, I am amazed of your accomplishments. Can you personally? <clears throat> Good morning, po, sa lahat. Okay, madam, madam professor. Ah, uh, nakaka proud kasi that you were. Conferred as the first Asian Social Innovation Thought Leader Awardee. Ang uh, tanang ko pa, what 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 motivated you to focus working in addressing social and environmental issues with innovations in various areas ranging from water purification to financial inclusion? Well, um, what actually motivated me is to you know contribute to solving the problem of poverty, no? It's an age-old problem in the Philippines. And uh, I've been in development work all my life, yeah, all my professional life. The first, uh, uh, when I, 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 as I said, my formative years was with the Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement where we were organizing farmers, fishers, and indigenous communities uh, so that they can actually um, control their lives and uh, manage their own development. You know? And um, what actually struck me was that Uh, there was a development paradox and dilemma. Yeah, uh, the, what is the parad? Uh, what is a paradox? It's it's you know unbelievable, but uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, true, but I mean unbelievable. Yeah, um, it's uh, the paradox is about economic growth. You know, our economy is growing, but if you look at poverty, it's not being resolved. Yeah, uh, it's continuing to be a big problem. And then uh, economic growth is actually c- coupled with Uh, growing inequality, no? So parang may paradox doon dahil it's unbelievable but true. Nag-grow yung economy mo, pero bakit hindi nakikinabang yung mga tao, right? So um, so I think what really motivated me to go into innovation and social entrepreneurship is, you know, looking for uh, new ways of doing things, new, new sol- ano? innovative solutions to social problems, yeah? to this age-old problem of poverty, inequality, and dumagdag din yung environmental sustainability. So parang um, yun siguro. And then the dilemma na ang tagal-tagal na na nagpa-poverty reduction program yung gobyerno, nagpa-poverty reduction, reduction program yung maraming mga NGOs, ganyan. Pero still, hindi siya nare-resolve. Okay? So parang so the, the paradox and the di- dilemma of development was what pushed me to go into looking at new ways, uh, new approaches, new strategies for actually resolving these age-old problems. No? So yun yung primary motivation. But it's really uplifting the lives of the poor and marginalized uh, people. Because kasi yun yung exposure ko from the very beginning. Even when I was a student activist, I was a student activist, by the way. Uh, the reason why I became a student activist was because I was questioning why are there poor people, no? Where, while there are rich people, right? And so I wanted to not only bridge that gap, but resolve the problem of poverty and underdevelopment. So I think that continues to motivate me because even in social entrepreneurship, as you may know uh, later, no, if, you will, if you've read social entrepreneurship literature, maraming strands of social entrepreneurship, but the strand that I actually am most involved in Are, is that is that is social entrepreneurship that addresses poverty inequality and sustainability yeah because you can be a social enterprise and not address these issues right um, you can just be a social enterprise and ad- address a general social problem but you do not need to address poverty and inequality but uh, the reason why a lot of research that I've done 
and a lot of the platform building that I've done is on social enterprises with the poor as primary stakeholders is because I think social entrepreneurship needs to step up and you know try to look at how solutions to these age-old problems can actually be achieved. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Follow-up question na siguro dito, Ma'am Lisa. So talagang from the very core of your being, you believe that the problem of poverty in the Philippines can be solved? Oh, yeah. And actually, napakita na many social entrepreneurship interventions. When I say social entrepreneurship interventions, it's not just social enterprises working, yeah? Single social enterprises. It's about a collaborative endeavor where social enterprises play an important role, but it's collab in collaboration with government, with business, with, uh, with academe even. It's a collaborative effort to actually solve these problems. Um, uh, there have been success stories, and these success stories are precisely the inspiration uh, why we believe that they should be mainstreamed as solutions to social problems. And that's the reason why we're pushing for the poverty reduction to social entrepreneurship bill, because we believe that that will provide the enabling environment um, and the enabling ecosystem for social entrepreneurship to become a mainstream strategy, not just a strategy pursued by some NGOs and social enterprises, but it's, it becomes a mainstream strategy to solve poverty and inequality as well as sustainability issues. Thank you, ma'am. Partner, baka pwede ako makaisa pa kay uh, ma'am? In connection oh, ma up. Uh, maybe, ma'am, uh, Lisa, in a very brief ano lang po no can you cite or uh, uh, enumerate po yung mga success stories po na that would really prove your thesis that uh, poverty can really be uh, solved here in our state philippines yeah, yeah. Um, i'll just give you two examples no and these two examples actually were uh, part of the basis for the benchmarks for transformational partnerships and women's economic empowerment and agricultural value chains that uh, was shared with you, no? one of the readings, yeah? Uh, and the, there were two Philippine examples, no? There were two best practices in the Philippines from which we called these uh, benchmarks for transformational partnerships and women's economic empowerment, agricultural value chains. And these were Alter Trade Foundation in Negros. Anyone from Negros here? Negros uh, Bedito. And the other one is Bote Central and the Philippine Coffee Alliance. Anyway, let me just, uh, ikwento ko ng konti, no? yung Alter Trade Foundation. Alter Trade Foundation uh, worked with uh, agrarian reform beneficiaries, uh, the Sakadas. Um, kilala nyo yung mga Sakadas. Uh, <laughs> hindi ko alam kung sino sa inyo yung ka-age ko. No? But uh, when I was in college, <laughs> I actually was uh, very much moved by the picture of Joel Abong. No? There was this uh, Sakada in Negros na going hungry because of the sugar crisis. Yeah? So Alter Trade Foundation was born out of that sugar crisis. No? And uh, if you remember in 1986, nagkaroon ng agrarian reform, no? uh, yung sugar crisis nangyari. And um, it was because tinanggal yung sugar quota sa Pilipinas ng U United States. Yeah? And so the sugar that was being bought by the US before from the Philippines on a regular basis, tinanggal yung quota. Um, yung mga sugar farms sa Negros na it was a monocrop economy at that time, nag, ano, um, they no longer, uh, parang uh, they stopped planting sugar because walang market, right? And because of that, nagkaroon ng sugar crisis. The sugar workers in the haciendas of Negros went hungry. Inabandon ng landlords yung mga, farm, yung mga sugar farms or yung sugar, sugar haciendas, yeah? So uh, Alter Trade was born during the sugar crisis. And it was a response. Uh, and then in 86, nagkaroon ng agrarian reform, if you, if you remember, no? when Cory came to power, uh, nagkaroon ng agrarian reform. And the agrarian reform, the sugar, the sugar workers became agrarian reform beneficiaries. And nung naging agrarian reform beneficiaries sila, syempre sugar workers sila, hindi naman nila alam kung paano magplano ng ng farm. Hindi naman nila alam kung paano um, mag-manage ng isang farm dahil all they knew was how to plant sugar cane, right? Because they were workers in sugar hacienda. So, ang Alter Trade uh, came in to actually organize the sugar workers 
in uh, sugar workers turned agrarian reform beneficiaries and then uh, empowered them to become leaders and members of cooperatives and associations of agrarian reform beneficiaries. And over a period of 20 years, para hindi tayo masyado magtagal, no? over a period of 20 years, we're able to um, resolve the problem of hunger. No? Kasi dati dati, uh, the sugar workers went hungry every time na wala na yung sugar season. No? Uh, pero ngayon, uh, nag-introduce uh, nag yung alter trade ng diversification of crops and income sources so that uh, the, uh, the sugar workers turn agrarian reform beneficiaries actually were able to make their farms productive. And um, you, you would see that they became leaders and members of uh, agrarian reform beneficiary organizations and cooperatives that in turn became the vehicles for community development, visioning and planning, that became the, uh, the, the vehicles for the implementation of youth with community development visions and plans. And um, hindi lang, ano, a, a majority of the members of the agrarian reform beneficiary associations and cooperatives have overcome poverty by now, no? uh, 20 years later, right? So parang, uh, isa sa mga success stories yan, even, even government actually, cites them as success story in relation to agrarian reform. Kasi maraming agrarian reform beneficiaries lost their lands, right? Because they sold it back, ganyan, hindi naging successful. But what Alter Trade did was a comprehensive intervention that not only provided um, uh, services, to, to services to make the lands productive, no? but actually empowered uh, the, the sugar workers, third agrarian reform beneficiaries, to manage their farms. So they became farmer entrepreneurs. Yeah? Uh, they, from sugar workers, they became farmer entrepreneurs. And now you would see that they're really uh, leaders and members of these cooperatives and associations and their families have overcome poverty. But the other very heartening story about Alter Trade is that they, uh, they actually um, uh, organized a federation of these uh, agrarian reform beneficiary associations and also the um, cooperatives. And you have an organization called Negros Organic Fair Trade Association. And this Negros Organic Fair Trade Association now controls 60% of the trading and marketing arm, which is NOFTA Fair Trade House. No? So nagpayo sila ng isang trading and marketing arm later, which they called NOFTA Fair Trade House. And 60% of this NOFTA Fair Trade House is owned by the farmer, uh, the agrarian reform beneficiary organizations and cooperatives. Yeah, so it's it's a heartwarming story because from yung talagang landless, powerless, hungry uh, sugar workers, you you see them today as leaders and members of agrarian reform beneficiary associations and cooperatives that are federated into an organization that is now a co-equal of Alter Trade Foundation in development work. No? Ngayon kasi, yung NOFTA, the Negros Organic Fair Trade Association, is also promoting um, organic agriculture. Uh, it's also promoting uh, fair trade among other small producers now. No? A partner na siya ng Alter Trade. So that's one of the success stories, I think, of empowerment that happened. Uh, that is actually uh, very encouraging. And the other... The other, um, the other story I wanted to share with you is the story of Bota Central and the Philippine Coffee Alliance. Ito naman, coffee ang, ano, coffee ang commodity. No? Alam naman natin na yung coffee, marami sa, sa coffee na iniinom natin ay instant, di ba? Right? And that is actually uh, being manufactured by big coffee companies, right? Yan. But ang ginawa ng Alter Tree, uh, ang ginawa ng Bota Central, uh, May, may, ano, may, meron silang invention na ginawa yung, uh, yung si, si Basil Reyes is an inventor. He actually created a, he created a, uh, a machine that could uh, process coffee and that could actually, uh, that could uh, help community-based coffee enterprises uh, process their own coffee beans and sell their own brands of coffee, okay? So, ang ginawa ng, ang ginawa ng Bote Central, nakipag-work sila with NGOs to actually organize community-based coffee enterprises 
And this uh, community-based coffee enterprises did not only help the coffee farmers produce green coffee beans that were of good quality, but they also assisted them to move up the value chain, no? it to become processors of their own brands of coffee and to be sellers of their own brands of coffee. So ngayon, yung Philippine Coffee Alliance, you would see there will be about uh, several brands of uh, brewed coffee that you can actually uh, see. And each brand is actually a brand from an indigenous community or a local organic, a local community of farmers. Yeah. So, um, and if you look at the if you, if you look at the stories of the farmers uh, organizations uh, that actually set up community-based coffee enterprises at the local level, you would see different stories of empowerment as well. No? Where now they're not just producers of green coffee beans that they sell to big companies. But now they are actually producers of green coffee beans that they process and they sell using their own brand. Yeah, and Philippine Coffee Alliance actually is this alliance of what fifty plus community-based coffee enterprises all over the Philippines. So that's another success story, and the lives of the women and men uh, coffee producers all over the country, including indigenous people. Huh? have actually been uh, uplifted. The li their lives have been uplifted because of this intervention. So those are just two examples. I can go on, no? There's another good example. If you're, uh, I could go on and on actually. Yung, halimbawa, yung, if you, if you know Gandang Kalikasan or human nature, those of you who pass through um, Commonwealth, makikita nyo yung malak malaking sign, human nature, yung pro-Philippines, pro-nature, uh, pro-environment, and pro-poor, no? Uh, this is another example of a social enterprise that decided that they wanted to uh, engage the poor as workers. Yeah, so they actually selected workers coming from poor communities, yung mga gawad kalinga communities nila, no? Yeah, because they were uh, Anna Melotto Wilk is actually the daughter of Tony Melotto, who actually founded Gawad Kalinga. No? So, ang um, human nature or gandang kalikasan the company was a setup because they wanted to provide livelihoods to Gawad Kalinga communities, yeah? So, parang yung, uh, we studied the Gawad Kalinga, uh, we studied the, the impact of Gandang Kalikasan on the, on, the, on the poor workers who they actually trained and they actually uh, are provided uh, wages that are living wages. Yun yung isang ginagawa ng social enterprises, eh. Apart from, in the case of Alter Trade and Bote Central, they give fair prices, no? to their supplier communities, right? Um, ap apart from moving them up the value chain. But in the case, for example, of Gandang Kalikasan, they also showed that they're actually, uh, social enterprises are much better employers because they are humane employers, yeah? Uh, Gandang Kalikasan pays their workers living wages, not minimum wages. So 60% of the expenses of Gandang Kalikasan go to paying their workers. No? And uh, we made a study in, uh, about two years ago, we made a study of the impact they've made on their workers. And we found that most of them actually have, actu uh, have overcome uh, poverty. And they have, uh, they've actually become what Anna Melotto will call uh, the new middle class. No? Uh, the new middle class kasi may middle class na may values. No? Uh, values of social sustainability, equity, ganyan. Na parang promote nila yung pro-environment, pro-poor, and pro-Philippines na values nila. Uh, Shinir share siyempre nila with their workers. No? So, and the workers, uh, parang, it, it, it was interesting that the, uh, when um, Ana, Ana Melotto asked us, Isaiah, to actually help them measure their impact, we created an index, a development index for them uh, that looked at four realms of development. Um, yung una is uh, their ano, improvement in the quality of life of their families, yeah? Um, and then pangalawa yung uh, financial, yung ano, uh, capacity for financial management. Marami sa kanila wala ng utang, no? At kaya na nilang i-manage yung mga sweldo nila ng maayos, no? And uh, the growing assets that they have. And then the third realm was actually, um, ano ba yung, ano? They became better workers, no? Uh, empowered workers, um, so their performance in the in the company had also improved. But the fourth fourth realm that actually is very uh, telling is that gusto ng gusto ng gandang kalikasan to have an impact on their spiritual well-being. No? 
So yung pang-apat na realm was spiritual well-being. So that was an interesting uh ano, it was it, it was interesting that uh, the founders of Gandang Kalikasan and Human Nature wanted to, you know, assist their poor workers to become empowered uh, stakeholders of Gandang Kalikasan in these four realms, no? Na hindi lamang in, in giving them living wages kasi yung living wages mataas ha? at the moment um when when ano when um at the time that when we first studied gandang kalikasan they were paying their workers 750 at a time that the living the minimum wage was around 480 ganyan now i think their uh, minimum uh, their living wages have reached a thousand or so um so that that is the the wage of the lowest paid worker all right so parang they they strive to give li- living wages because they believe that you know a company should not you know should not amass in wealth they should create wealth and distribute that wealth to their stakeholders and that's what they're doing no so parang for you for for us discussing you know the issue of business ethics right uh, social enterprises are businesses that have a social mission they are social mission driven and the, the reason why they're ethical is because it's the social mission that is driving their development and growth yeah so those are just three examples i hope that you were inspired by those three examples because they inspire me yeah. <laughs> to actually work more definitely thank you salamat uh, ma'am ma'am Lisa no Siguro back there yung sinasabi mo kanina ng oxymoron. Siguro mas uh, after ng sharing ni Ma, mas magandang tawaging paradox eh. <laughs> Kasi yung uh, contradictories na sinasabi mo sa oxymoron, but this one, Ma'am Lisa was saying, ano eh, nababasa ko existential paradox tong tinutukoy niya eh. from hunger, no, from hunger, from hunger to um, be the one who are actually in control and uh, they are not actually its business, yes. Pero they are not focused on gaming. It's more on uh, no, distributing wealth to everybody. I, I think it's more on paradoxical the, kaysa oxymoronic no? yung, yung banggit natin kanina sa introduction. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, maganda yung sinasabi mo, Rochi, kasi when we talk about the economy, parang ganun, uh, iniisip natin na ano ang economy ay about uh, creating wealth. Yeah? It's about uh, consumption and production. We, we we do not see the um, um ano na? economics is actually also a study of distribution alam mo yon so hindi lang tayo dapat nag-uusap ng creation and uh, production and consumption of uh, products and services in economics we should be talking about the distribution of the wealth that is created by the economy and dun dun actually yung mahirap eh kasi when you're your economy is controlled by corporations that are actually built to amass wealth for themselves to accumulate wealth for themselves no then talaga namang mag-accumulate ng wealth yung the few while everyone gets a pittance in terms of salaries in terms of you know uh, crumbs right but when you actually have a distributive enterprise philosophy you meaning to say you create wealth and you distribute that wealth to the poor who are your primary stakeholders which is what social enterprises with the poor as primary stakeholders do then you actually are able to distribute wealth it's not just parang pag kuminsan kasi when we talk about distribution or redistribution we say that that's a function of government but social enterprises these new entities called social enterprises no are actually creating wealth and distributing wealth to the poor who are their primary stakeholders. Kaya it doesn't need to go through government in order for it to be distributed to the poor and the marginalized. So, yeah. na-uplift yung lives ng mga tao, no? So, yeah. And, and, um, yeah. yeah, the good thing about the distribution is the people have the purchasing power and then iikot ulit yung economy because people can now use their 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 wealth to, to uh, contribute in the economy. So, yeah. very maganda yung ano. If, uh, yeah. Ang ang ano lang doon is that in studies about poverty, no? Uh, I don't know if you've read about Chasen, uh, where yes. he actually talks about poverty not just as low income, but it's actually poverty is capability deprivation. Um, that it's actually a deprivation of the capability to improve your well-being, no? So, uh, kaya yun yung ano, tingin ko, marami sa mga poverty reduction programs fail. 
because they look at poverty as you know just increasing income of people which is not which is not the the main uh, reason for poverty actually poverty is a function of the lack of control over resources and decision making processes and the capability to actually use such resources and decision making processes effectively and efficiently and sustainably no so parang uh, so kaya when we talk about empowerment processes we should be this we should be discussing and poverty reduction should be about empowerment processes right we should be talking about organizing the poor so that they can actually be their own actors in their own development that's the reason why social enterprises are very important as a vehicles for poverty reduction because they help to empower the poor to take control over their economic life. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Partner, napakainit nitong ating unang question pa lang. Yan, no? Talagang... <laughs> no, I think I, I actually covered some of the questions that were yes, already yes. Ano, uh, made. Okay. So, but we can actually discuss that some more. Yeah. So, partner, uh, can See? we... Anong nabipili mong tanong dito na pwede natin... Uh, yung ating susunod sa listahan ay ethical market no um ka partner ano nakikita mo dito no um, ano ethical market ba yung uh, no uh, general business ethics pala no um marami na dito ang cover ni ni Ma'am Lisa no um But maybe uh, partner we can ask uh, number two question yung uh, maybe we, we will ask uh, Romel Jan Obena to uh explain his question on uh, the business avoiding ethical problems so the main the question is can a business avoid ethical problems uh romil are you there maybe you can explain further your question yung context siguro ng iyong tanong romil are you with us So your question is, can a business avoid ethical problems? Romel John, nakapasok kaya siya? Uh, mukha naman ang dyan siya. Ito po. Yeah. Romel, go ahead please. Romel, we cannot hear you. Baka naka-off ang iyong ano, microphone siguro, ang audio mo. Ah, naka-on na raw si Romel. Naka-on na, oo, pero wala siyang... Uh, okay. Yeah. Let me just... Let me attempt to answer the question. Um, yes, ma'am. Yeah, kasi ang tanong ni Romel ay um, can a business avoid ethical problems? Sabi ko kay Franz at kay Rochi kanina, anong ibig sabihin ni Romel ng avoid? Kasi parang is it the context? No? Can, uh, is it a, a question of context? Or is, a, is it a question of the the entrepreneur or the businessman or woman uh, avoiding the ethical question. Yeah? But I think by the very nature of business, um, you actually create wealth. Yeah. So the question of how you create wealth and how you distribute the wealth is actually a question of ethics, right? So I think any business will need to answer these ethical questions. And a lot of businesses actually just amass wealth and feel that it's okay, right? Uh, but as I was describing to you, no, uh, social enterprises um, create wealth but distribute that wealth, unlike uh, ordinary corporations that actually create wealth and amass that wealth to the owners for the owners of capital. Diba? So, nandyan yung contrast no, in terms of yung uh, corporate businesses uh, and the social enterprises or social mission-driven businesses, if I may call them that, um, parang contrast sila kasi yung isa, yung kanyang philosophy, no? because we're, this is a philosophy class, right? Their, social, uh, their enterprise philosophy is one of accumulation, accumulation of wealth for the owners of capital. For us, yung sa social enterprise, yung kanilang enterprise philosophy is actually one that is distributive. No? They create wealth and distribute the wealth to uh, a broader segment of society who are their stakeholders. No? And a big uh, percentage of the wealth goes to the poor who are their primary stakeholders. So this happens in different ways. No? Uh, sabi ko na kanina, 
uh, for example, social enterprises give living wages. No? Rather than just minimum wage, they actually give living wages so that their workers can live decent lives, right? But at the same time, um, social enterprises also pay fair prices to supplier communities. Ang fair price is usually negotiated between the seller, uh, between the social enterprise and the supplier community. Na parang the fair price is then that price na hindi lamang minimit yung production costs, but actually uh, an in, uh, ano, a, a margin so that the community can uh, develop, no? Uh, the supplier community can develop. So distribution of wealth can also come in the form of the profits. No? Kung may profits na, na nagawa, part of that profits goes back uh, to, the, to the supplier communities or to communities. So this is what happens with fair trade organizations. Yung fair trade organization sa tinatawag, they actually uh, give back part of the profits as fair trade premiums to some communities of suppliers. No? So yung fair trade premium na to, uh, this is one of the things that happened in the alter trade case. No? Yung fair, tra fair trade organization kasi yung alter trade. So uh, the fair trade premiums were actually going back to the communities. And then the community, the supplier community organizations, no? these uh, agrarian reform beneficiary organizations and cooperatives that I was talking about, make decisions about what to do with, their fair, with that fair trade premium. So, parang um, malaki yung tingin kong question of ethics when you are uh, when you are in business because it is central to your ethos kung ikaw ba ay you know ikaw, parang how you create profit and how you distribute profit is a question of ethical proportions na parang and it's also dependent on your enterprise philosophy yan um, yeah uh, Professor Lisa, siguro connected to the idea that ano, every business decision is also an ethical decision because you know all people involved. When you make a business decision, people are involved, stakeholders are involved, and for sure they will be affected by the business decision. Oh yes. So, yeah. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. So, ang ano lang ang ano lang sa businesses is that uh, you actually are, um, parang. All organizations naman for that matter, as you said, friends, no? All organizations for that matter who have stakeholders, you know, impact their decisions, impact on their stakeholders. And so does, so do businesses, right? Yeah. Uh, but dahil kasi yung businesses have this profit objective, right? They want to make uh, profits uh, in doing their activities. Um, uh, if they're profit-oriented, and the profit define your know, profit orientation defines their being diba? in the same way that when growth defines the being of a an economy of the economy of society diba? parang growth at the expense of people and the environment it's the same thing eh? at the micro level you talk about businesses uh, amassing profit at the expense of people and the environment at the macro level, you talk about the economy growing at the expense of people and the environment. And those are, uh, unfortunately, yun yung mainstream business and mainstream economic paradigm. No? That's the reason why we need to shift paradigms, right? We need to shift to a par paradigm of uh, sustainability, social equity, and uh, we need to resolve poverty as a social issue. And, uh, well, that's what the Sustainable Development Goals are all about, yeah? Um, though you probably have heard of the Sustainable Development Goals, no? the 17 goals agreed upon by all countries of the world and various stakeholders globally uh, to end poverty, no? end poverty by 2030, to uh, reduce inequality, you know? uh, to develop sustainable consumption and production systems. All these are lofty goals that everyone is already agreed are important and needed. No? Unfortunately, uh, it's a question of strategy. So everybody's agreed on the end goal, pero ang question, the strategy. And that's where social entrepreneurship as a strategy is very important. Because I think social entrepreneurship, in the economy, social entrepreneurship is probably the most critical strategy that will resolve inequality. Kasi it para bang yung wealth creation, if you don't, integrate wealth distribution in the process, which is what social enterprises do. You will never be able to resolve poverty. 
Okay, thank you, Ma'am Lisa. So, Rauchi, who is our next uh, participant to ask question? Nakapun na naman po tayo sa usapin ng ethical market. Baka po na dyan si uh, Sir Alex. Sir Alex, merong uh, question ka na kung nabibigyan ng pansin. Nandyan ka po? Yes, yes. Nandito po. Uh, medyo mahina lang po yung internet connection. Kaya uh, di po ako makapagbukas ng, ano, ng aking video. Okay. okay. Now then, clear po. Go ahead, sir. Ano, uh, ma'am. Uh, good morning po, ma'am. I'm Alex po from the Cavite State University, Maine, sa Indang Cavite. But I'm here residing in Pasay due to the fact that COVID-19, so I cannot yet uh, transfer from the university. So, ma'am, this is my question. Kung nabibigyan ng pansin ng economic sustainab sustainability through the efforts of the different economic and marketing sectors that study and promulgate ways and means in order to attain it, bakit malaki pa rin ang gap between the poor at sa mga elitista na mas nakikinabang sa mga yung handog ng economic sustainability? Saan po mapasok ang kahalaga ng etika sa kalunos-lunos na realidad na ito? Yeah, but uh, that's I think precisely what we've been talking about. Now, we need to bring back ethics to business, right? <laughs> so every business should ask the question, how do I create wealth and how do I distribute the wealth uh, fairly, right? Uh, Kasi parang even for ordinary businesses, okay lang naman na they make profit, right? Uh, but, but how much profit? Parang, but not, not, not profit at the expense of uh, the environment and people. You know? so, and social enterprises are actually showing the way in terms of how you can make profits, how you can create wealth, uh, and impact positively on the environment and impact positively on the quality of life of your stakeholders, right? So, meron namang way of doing it. And ang problema natin, may mainstream economic paradigm nga at saka may mga alternative uh, economic paradigms na ina-advocate tayo. No? So, parang... Uh, unfortunately, we're still in the margins, right? Social entrepreneurship is still very marginal. Since 2012, we have been pushing Congress to enact the poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship law, which is actually a law that would provide an enabling environment for social enterprises to develop and flourish. No? And as, as I've already explained to you, the important role of social enterprises in resolving poverty and inequality, right? But until now, hindi pa mapasa-pasa ng kongreso, right? And without the recognition of social enterprises and mainstreaming them as partners of government in uh, resolving poverty and inequality, tingin ko, our, our, our society, our economy will always, will be dominated, will continue to be dominated by corporations that do not uh, have ethics, yung <laughs> iba. Um, of course, there are corporations that actually adhere to corporate social responsibility, right? But even for corporate social responsibility, maraming strands yan. No? Um, when you talk about corporate social responsibility, merong corporate philanthropy. So they make a mass profits, but at the end of the day, they just give a little of their profit to actually benefit one community or two communities. No? Parang breadcrumbs, right? It's philanthropy. And then meron naman yung community relations. They actually create a, a mass profits and then they just give a little to their host community. Kasi kung hindi nila matulungan yung host communities nila, baka magkaroon sila ng security issues, right? And then there's of course that uh, trend in corporations for corporate citizenship. Yun yung isang trend, no? Yung corporate citizenship is when you integrate um, uh, environmental and uh, social goals into your company philosophy and practice. No? That's, what, that's what's called corporate citizenship. And yung mga nagko-corporate citizenship na mga companies, sila yung mas tingin kong nasa, nasa realm ng trying to contribute to sustainability. No? And minority yan among corporations at the moment. No? So, parang if your economy is corporate-led and most corporations are not even doing CSR and those who are doing corporate social responsibility, most of them are just doing philanthropy and community relations. Very few are doing corporate citizenship. And we have a growing social enterprise sector that does not have the support of government. 
of course you will still have the problem of what you see no so parang tingin ko alam natin maraming nakakaalam ng solusyon pero those in power have not come to terms with real solutions to the problems that we have and of course maraming complications yan no Uh, you talk about movements for social transformation and change, right? And we're not, we, we cannot just be talking about the economy, but we need to also talk about politics. We also need to talk about culture, right? We all, parang ano, um, it's, I think, uh, overall social transformation needs, overall societal transformation needs to be comprehensive, hindi lang naman sa ekonomiya, di ba? So, parang, the reason why Um, we still see poverty and inequality and sustainability as critical issues the same way that we saw them as lumalala pa nga, di ba? It's because the mainstream paradigm of the economy um, of development has not changed, right? And we need to change that. And uh, parang part of the needed change is really the recognition and support for social enterprises. And a poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship law that would actually uh, create the conditions for recognizing and supporting social enterprises as critical partners of government in um, in in, ano, in poverty reduction. And now, given the crisis that we are going through, no? yung sa COVID, dun sa mga uh, yung mga communities na nasalanta ng bagyo, no? uh, we need strategies for Uh, economic recovery and building back better and building back fairer. And we believe that social entrepreneurship is actually a key strategy that government and businesses need to support. Because even businesses need to support social enterprises because if they talk about uh, sourcing their, ano, sourcing their uh, raw materials, for example, saan nila isasource yan, di ba? Sa communities naman ng farmers, ng fishers, ng indigenous people, right? And so, parang during the process of building back better, uh, social enterprises can actually become key actors in working with corporations if they are, parang if they can imbibe corporate citizenship, I think. Um, but of course, corporate citizenship is something that happens and that, that is led by the leader. It's led by the owner, right? The owners of capital. And that's part of the solution. But the bigger part of the solution, I think, is with government and the civil society sector uh, grappling with the importance of um, integrating social entrepreneurship as a key strategy for building back fairer. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. partner. Uh, thank you very much, po, uh, Ma'am Lisa. No, uh, very very quick. Ano lang po, biglang sumingit sa isip ko. No, meron meron din po kasi mga kasamahan natin is doing business. Uh, kung inaalaw po ng siguro ng government o yung legal o yung yung common practice na uh, kita profit margin is up to siguro 20%. Uh, para po sa isang uh, business person, private individual, magkano po kaya ang o gaano kalaki ang porsyento pwede nating i-consider para Uh, sa modelong ito ng, ng ethics, kumbaga, ilang percent ba talaga ang kailangan ng ating uh, profit margin net uh, para masabi natin, maging sustainable itong, uh, itong ating uh, proyektong ito. Kasi sabi mo, well, mahi- uh, yeah. go ahead ma'am. Mahirap, na kata- mahirap na katanungan yan. Uh, kasi hindi tingin ko sa porsyento yan pinag-uusapan dapat. Ang pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, uh, ang pinag-uusapan natin dapat is how should your profits be generated? So you should not discount on environment and discount on people. Yun yung point eh. Parang ang problema ng maraming businesses, in-externalize nila yung environmental and social costs. And the people who pay are actually the people in communities and government. di ba? That's the problem eh. So uh, what we need is an ethical market where businesses uh, integrate social and environmental costs in the cost of doing business. Yung problema ngayon, hindi ganun. And I think for that to happen, government needs to do its regulatory role. Yung regulatory role ng government na dapat ganito yung, ganito yung standards ng paggawa, parang standards sa usapin ng business, no? In terms of how you 
So, hindi pa porsyento ng profit ang pinag-uusapan, but ano eh, incorporating all the costs of doing business, all the costs uh, in terms of social and environmental. Kasi there are some businesses that will be negative if you impute, you neg- will, that will generate negative profit if you improve environmental and social costs. Yung mga very polluting industries, for example, pag inimpute mo yung environmental cost dyan, hindi na yan mga kikita. So parang, all I'm saying is, it's a matter of how you organize your economy. No? If you organize your economy in such a way that environmental and social costs are imputed by all businesses in making their products and services, ganyan, you will have a very different society. You will have a very different economy. Because that economy will actually be internalizing the social and environmental costs and not making communities, government, and future generations pay for those costs. Kasi if you pollute the environment now, di ba? it's future generations who suffer, right? It's not wala, just the people now. Wala ako ma'am maisip ngayon kung hindi yung kakaganap lang ng mga bagyo and pagbaha no? in relation to what you are saying. No? Uh, mga business people, uh, yun na nga, no? sa kagustuhang magkaram ng, uh, ng, ng profit at the expense of yung environment. And I think itong mga nakaraan natin nakikita na nararanasan eh, direktang epekto nitong no you know uh, selfishness among those who are in, in control actually yun po uh, well, thank yeah, part of it is slugging di ba mining you know, uh, logging or mining yeah 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 all of that and uh, central to the issue is really good governance you know uh, you, you need government to manage the economy in such a way that these environmental and social costs are actually being imputed and being paid for by businesses. Hindi yung sinasubsidize ng gobyerno, sinasubsidize ng communities, sinasubsidize ng future generations, yung cost of doing business. So parang, we're not against profits per se. Eh. It's really how you create profits and how you distribute the profits. That's the, cre- the big question. Kaya again, uh, in, the, in relation to the creation of profits, parang kailangan impute mo yung social and environmental costs, right? Full full accounting. No? Tapos dun sa how you distribute profits, you should be fairly distributing profits. No, hindi yung inaamas mo lang and concentrating it to owners of capital. And yung, that's, that's, ano, that's a sad reality. You amass profits because you do not pay for the cost of doing business, di ba? Fully. And then, you amass it for yourself pa, the owners of capital. And it's, it's a vicious circle. And that has to be broken. Okay, thank you Ma'am Lisa. Meron lang po dito ano, uh, clarificatory question po coming from Romel. Uh, kasi meron po siyang technical issue. Uh, sabi po niya, I believe my question pertains to how can a business avoid ethical issues rather than can a business avoid ethical issues? So I don't know Ma'am. Well, if you... yeah. Usapin, I, I think I, I'm not I'm not so sure about what your what your question is about it because uh, parang um, the way that I understand your question how parang paano ba yung how can a business avoid ethical issues ano ba yun? what's the I'm not sure I understand the point from it maybe ma'am uh, how can a business avoid ethical you know they their their ethical Unethical practices. How can a business... Uh, uh, that's a different question. Yung unethical practices kasi... Um, yeah, okay. Uh, how can a business avoid unethical practices? Um, have, a, have a set of... You have to have leaders with a set of values and vision that go beyond themselves, right? So you, you will need to have leaders who actually make decisions for the good of society, for the good of community, for the good of the environment, right? And not just thinking about their self-interest. Um, parang, so, parang ano ba? Um, it's related siguro dun sa ano eh, yung kind of morally upright person be successful in business na ta- tanong ni Joseph. No? Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh. Joseph Pana asks that. He actually, you can be a, a business person, you can be an entrepreneur and have and be ethical. And social entrepreneurs have shown 
that you can be in business and be ethical. So parang, and many, uh, parang there are also inclusive businesses as well as uh, businesses with uh, practicing corporate citizenship that have shown that you can integrate social and environmental goals into your company philosophy and practice. So parang, it's a choice, eh. but it starts with the leader. Kasi nga, uh, businesses are led by you know, owners of capital, right? Uh, and parang depende kung ano yung values and vision nung owners of capital na yan. Uh, the, the, the entrepreneur or the, the entrepreneur or the businessman or woman, yan, depending on their values, then you, you can become an ethical business. If you want to, um, it's a question of uh, values, vision, and will. Um, Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, siguro, ma'am, ang follow-up question lang dun is, in the world of business, may laban ka ba? Kung ikaw yung ethical businessman, may laban ka ba dun sa mas maraming, mas malaking mundo ng mga unethical practices, business practices? Yeah. How can you compete? You see, one of, the, one of the things kasi that I think we need to understand also is that we're not just talking here about the production of goods and services. We need to ask are the products and services needs or wants? Yeah. Are the products and services, uh, parang ano? Are the products and services uh, necessary or not? Right. So, ang parang ano ba? Uh, and uh, do the products and services contribute to sustainable consumption and production? Um, so, parang ang social enterprises kasi are not just producing any product or any service. No? They are actually, social enterprises are mainly producing products and services that are part of basic needs. Diba? Uh, uh, parang, and if ever they are, parang ano, they are, uh, parang, they're, they're the, at the realm of uh, basic needs and uh, enriching needs like uh, cultural. Diba? Kasi, pa, cultural products, ganyan. Ma'am Lisa. Um, so, Ma usapin... Ah, sorry, sorry. Ang tawag po yeah. dito ng Catholic Social Encyclopedia. No, go ahead. Because it's, ano, goods that are truly good and services that truly serve. Goods that are truly good and services that truly <laughs> That's a good way. Yeah. No, that, that's a good way of, that's, that's a good way of putting it. No, kasi marami kasing, marami kasing products and services na talagang, ano na, nasa realm na yan ng, ano, um, wants lang na kinikreate ng advertise, advertisements, right? And parang, sa totoo lang, hindi na sila sa realm ng needs. And uh, parang bang needs that would uh, improve your quality of life, right? But they're at the realm of excesses, right? That they're at the realm of parang unethical goods and services, right? Parang, uh, so I guess, when social enterprises decide or the, uh, what product or service to create, right? They actually also have to answer the ethical question of what is this product or service for? And I guess every business person needs to do that. Ang problema, many businesses enter into business because they just want to make profit, right? It's not to meet a need or an important service, right? So, um, so when social enterprises go into a specific uh, product or service, they do so in a way that is innovative, actually. They try to innovate on a product or a service so that it becomes part of the sustainable consumption production system. For example, most social enterprises are into organic rice, di ba? Um, so parang rather than just promoting yung chemical-based rice and chemical-based agriculture, marami sa mga social enterprises have made their mark no, as very successful social enterprises producing and marketing organic rice, right? Um, there are also many, many social enterprises that have made a mark in terms of uh, serving markets that are ethical, diba? So... Kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga services and products ng social enterprises are not just any product or service. Pinipili din naman ng social enterprises kung ano yung products or services na ginagawa nila. And on that basis, they try to look at how to serve 
uh, how to provide that product or service in a better way. And they do innovations uh, in, the, in the process. So for example, let me give, ano, nung, ano, nung, nagkaroon na, nung nag, ano, nag, uh, nag COVID, no? Uh, one of the main innovations that uh, a social enterprise creating handmade paper actually did, no? yung uh, galing sa aba kayong handmade paper, was to create uh, environment-friendly face masks. No? Na parang hindi lamang yung face mask per se, kundi yung environment-friendly face masks. And I don't know if you know this uh, social enterprise, yung Salai Handmade Paper, uh, Shopee, no? in Mindanao. It's a fair trade organization that used to produce uh, handmade paper. Yeah? And uh, during the pandemic, since handmade paper was not being already bought, ganyan, kasi ano siya, um, hindi siya essential good, right? Ang nangyari, they actually looked for a product that would uh, serve the needs of people um, and still come from the raw materials that they were using. At yun yung ano, yun yung uh, ginawa. Uh, gumawa sila ng uh, abaka, uh, ano parang uh, face mask galing sa abaka, no? which is actually seven times, you could use it seven times uh, more. And then uh, it's actually reasonably priced, right? Uh, as of, kung ikukumpara nyo dun sa mga disposable masks. And of course, it's biodegradable, right? So, um parang yung competition kasi um, with ordinary businesses is something that social enterprises are able to do because they position in ethical businesses and they position in sustainable consumption and production systems. No? Marami sa mga social enterprises na nag-succeed ganyan. Look at human nature. No? Uh, they position themselves to produce uh, shampoo, soap, ganyan, in a way that was actually ethical, right? Um, so they're, they're serving an ethical market where uh, they actually source their, source their, uh, their, the raw materials are natural. Tapos they actually pay their workers well, they treat their, they empower their workers, right? And then they, they uh, promote themselves as pro-Philippines, pro-poor, and pro-nature, right? Uh, so, parang, kung mapapansin nyo, maraming social enterprises ganon. But of course, some social enterprises position themselves on the basis of improving the welfare and, uh, and the lot of their stakeholders. No? Um, so, maraming mga social enterprises uh, ganon. Uh, many of the cooperatives are like that. Um, so, Parang competition um, is something that social enterprises are able to, kahit dun sa, dun sa usapin ng ano, dun sa usapin ng sugar, ano yung pinuproduce na sugar ng outer trade? Muscovado. No? That used to be poor man sugar or poor person sugar. But they actually made it the sugar that was, that, that was what they were, they were exporting and they were promoting in supermarkets, right? And that's actually a better sugar for co uh, for ano, for um, brewed coffee. Um, so ano yung where did where did uh, Bote Central position itself? They position themselves with brewed coffee, no? Um, and yung community based coffee enterprises were selling their own brands of brewed coffee. But now, uh, Bote Central is starting to think about competing in the big market of soluble coffee. Kasi pakiramdam niya. At this point in time, kaya niyang gawin yon. And the reason why social enterprises can do that at a certain stage is because they are connected and they are supported more effectively by their stakeholders, their producer communities. No? So in a manner of speaking, maraming basis for competitive advantage yung social enterprises uh, in the way that they choose their products and services and in the way that they engage their stakeholders. So parang, if you talk, for example, to workers in human nature, they will not think about working anywhere else because they're totally committed to human nature because they believe in what human nature is doing, right? So many workers in ordinary companies are just, are just there because of it's a job, right? So what I'm just trying to say is that I think social enterprises are creating a whole new way of doing business 
they're creating products and services that are linked to sustainable consumption and production. Uh, they are actually engaged in creating wealth that is distributive to their primary stakeholders who are the poor and marginalized. And because of those, may mga, may mga sources of competitive advantage sila na wala yung mga corporations. Um, okay. So it's on the basis of that that they succeed as uh, social, uh, as, ano, as enterprises in their own right, right? Thank you, ma'am. Uh, partner, maka yung question natin is uh, about uh, Filipino values ata yung sunod, no? Opo. Mm -hmm. Nabanggit na rin ni Ma'am Lisa kanina, no? Yung uh, uh, indigenous na uh, produkto na ginamit din sa co bilang COVID, no? Siguro po, dito ko mas magandang ipasok yung katanungan ni Mr. Uh, Sir Jerby. Nadyan ka po ba? Sir Jerby? Ah, uh, yes po. Can you please uh, address po the question uh, personally to our uh, to Ma'am Lisa po? Uh, good morning po, uh, Professor Lisa po. So the question lang po is, what are the Filipino values that influence the mindset of entrepreneurs that will redirect in building ethical markets and a strong economy? Because po, uh, I am currently tasked as one of the researcher about uh, entrepreneurs here in our university. So. On our part po is uh, how are we going to hone the mindset of the students in terms of social entrepreneurs, something like that po, uh, which is the baseline is the values po of the Filipino mindset. Bale, gagawin po namin baseline yung uh, values of the Filipino mindset that will lead the student to be entrepreneur someday po. Yan po. Yeah, well, well, what comes to, the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about Filipino values is bayanihan, di ba? Kasi mm -hmm. ko, yung uh, bayanihan is, uh, uh, talks about uh, cooperation, it talks about working together, it talks about uh, unity uh, towards solving issues and problems in the community, di ba? Ganun yung... Uh, the way that bayanihan has always been part of Filipino culture na hindi pinag-uusapan yung bayad sa isa't isa, kundi yung pagtutulungan, di ba? Based on need of uh, your neighbor and your, uh, yung parang among the community members, right? So, uh, in some indigenous peoples, um, I remember when we did a study uh, of yung Ifugao culture, hindi ko alam kung may taga Ifugao dito, uh, we found out that they have a word, a local dialect for cooperation in different ways. No? Iba yung tawag nila sa cooperation when they build a house together or when they plant together or yung ganon. So I think um, one of the major values uh, of Filipinos is really bayanihan. Yeah? Um, I think... Um, Ang isang problema natin when you say Filipino values, kasi, uh, ano na yan eh, um, how would I put it, um, na-impinge na yung Filipino culture with a lot of other other cultures, uh, such as Western culture, for example. Yung, uh, you know, uh, and parang kung tatanungin mo tuloy, ano ba ang Filipino values? Meron nga bang... Uh, pure Filipino values ngayon, no? Yes, po. Um, yes, po. Diba? Kasi I think ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay values that people acquire uh, from their communities, from their families, from school, diba? And from media, social media, global na yan, diba? So parang um, ako, while bayanihan is actually a very important value that has been uh, shown to really be a value that Filipinos identify with. Yeah? Uh, beyond bayanihan, marami sa mga values na pinag-uusapan natin are values of humanity. Alam mo yun? It's not really because you're Filipino or you're American or you're Asian, but it's really values that we should ascribe to being humans. So parang yung values of um, yung value of sustainability, right? Uh, kasi siguro yung mga indigenous people, yung mga indigenous people na hindi naapektuhan pa ng ano ng uh, pag-impinge ng mga corporations at saka yung 
mga development projects ng government, di ba? Maybe they still have this, uh, this, ano, this value of, uh, you know, yung love for nature, that uh, life and nature are one. Yung mga ganyang values, no? Pero yung mga, mga indigenous people na napagpad na sa cities, right? at nakapag na ano na na imbibe na nila yung values of capitalism for example sasabihin mo ba na filipino value yun that is worth uh, pursuing diba so i guess what i'm saying is um, i think we should be talking about it's okay that we talk about what we can harness as filipino values but maybe we should also be talking about ano ba yung values uh, for humanity to actually get out of the issues and problems that we have today. And tingin ko, the problems and issues we have today cannot be solved by single countries anymore. But they are global issues and problems that we need to solve as a global community. And because of that, I believe that um, para bang ano, um, we shouldn't just be talking about Filipino values, but values that humanity should be aspiring to have values of uh, sustainability solidarity you know, yeah? uh, you know um, and um, social equity um, yung yung mga values na yon tingin ko are should be shared among countries so um, i'm all for studying uh, filipino values that actually emanated from our ancestors you know? okay and from the indigenous communities that were non-colonized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Uh, and I think we have a lot to learn from them in relation to how they relate to nature, how they, re they relate with each other in the community. Yeah, uh, And uh, I, I guess the Bayanihan is really born out of that, ano, that culture coming from our ancestors. But in relation to how we should be you know, promoting values among our, uh, among children, students, ganyan. Tingin ko we should be talking about values for the whole of humanity. That whether you're Filipino, Asian, American, Chinese, you sh we should have the same values. Isa kasing napaka-dangerous dito is uh, you become, you, you know, you you actually become ultra-nationalistic. Bigla mo yung nangyayari sa US, di ba? The, the movement with Trump, right? Na parang tinitignan lang nila is yung interest ng America, right? When, 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 when the interest, parang when the decisions that America makes is actually the decisions that impact on the lives of people globally, right? So we, I believe that we should be global citizens if we are to work together to solve the problems that we have of poverty. Kasi poverty is not just a problem in the Philippines. And its roots are not just um, Philippine-made, you know. Uh, poverty has its roots in colonization, right? And the continuing domination of um, of uh, the developed countries over our economy. So, parang hindi natin mariresolve yung marami nating problema just by, you know, addressing the need to have Filipino values. We need to build a global community with values that. Uh, Para bang ano, value uh, sustainability, that value equal equal rights and opportunities for all, uh, that value uh, nature, diba? that value um, so solidarity. Um, mas ganun yung tingin ko eh. Um, I, I believe that in order for us to survive as a people, we need to be thinking in terms of being global citizens and doing our part of in the global community of nations rather than just talking about our problems and solving our issues. Okay po. Uh, Professor Darice, pwede po follow up question lang po. Okay lang. Sure, sure. Uh, ano po kasi, uh, we're trying to make a research book na that will somehow, uh, ano matawag dyan ka ng, uh, revolutionary yung result kasi uh, you've mentioned po nga uh, it is the the values that could be a great ano po ng 
uh, to hone the student like in terms of Filipino values is bayanihan po. Uh, I find it bayanihan po kasi na uh, something po broad in a way that how, how, am I, how are we going to apply it to our students that kanang it will uh, it will somehow benefit to them on their part like it, it is a specific on their part nga that is the value that I mean yung, yun yung value na baseline po nila na that will somehow create po nga somehow create po na it will lead to them na to have a uh, entrepreneur mindset po well uh, well by itself by anihan is not going to have an entrepreneurial mindset no Mm -hmm. Kasi uh, the entrepreneurial mindset is not just about bayanihan. Okay, so po. I'm not sure I understand your question. Uh, ano po, bali ano lang po, uh, kasi si, uh, is, ang sinabi niyo po kanina na sa, sa tunong po, what are the Filipino, Filipino values that influence the mindset of entrepreneurs? Ang sagot niyo po kasi is bayanihan. So uh, I would just like to clarify po if how are we going to kanang, inculcate to the to the to the mind of the Filipino students that will lead to uh, that will result somehow. Well, if you if you look at the history, if you do yung parang studies on bayanihan kasi show, you know, uh, parang communities working together for the common good of the community, di ba? So parang tingin ko, the way that you ask uh, students to, to uh, practice bayanihan is to actually give them expose them to a social problem and a social reality. Okay. Uh, parang tingin ko, um, it's really... But ang entrepreneurial mindset kasi is different from just simply bayanihan. Kasi when you talk about an entrepreneurial mindset, it's, for example, isa sa mga features ng entrepreneurial mindset is that when others see a threat, you see an opportunity, di ba? Uh -huh. Hindi naman yung bayanihan, right? Uh -huh. But I think the importance of bayanihan in that context is that you see opportunities for the common good and for the community rather than for your individual self. Okay. Diba? Yun, yung, yun yung relevance, I think, ng bayanihan uh, in relation to you know developing the entrepreneurial mindset of people. No? But so parang I think concern for others, concern for the community, and then yung uh, maybe the other value is concern for nature, right? That uh, yeah. you concern for nature, concern for people, concern for community, uh, concern for others. Parang um, yung mga values na yon are important when you are an entrepreneur. Kasi, di ba, uh, the entrepreneurial mindset is not what makes entrepreneurs social entrepreneurs, right? What makes a social entrepreneur different from an ordinary entrepreneur is the social mission that is driving that entrepreneur. So I guess what I'm saying is um, yung entrepreneurial mindset is something that you should, that, that, that could be inculcated side by side with an appreciation of uh, the need to solve age-old social problems. And the way that you expose people to age-old social problems is to make them integrate into that social problem. Because one of the things that um, had a long-lasting impact on me as a student, uh, when I was still a student activist, was the integration with communities. Na parang dahil middle class, marami estudyante, di ba, are from the middle class. They are not exposed to poverty directly. They're not exposed to issues and problems uh, that confront uh, the ordinary people, right? So parang making them uh, Yung parang, making them integrate into communities that have those stark problems is one way of waking waking them up in terms of the social issues, right? Because uh, you can only feel empathy. You can only feel empathy if you are, if it's a shared experience, right? And so if you're a middle class person and then wala kang experience na magbibigay sa'yo na concern for the poor, di ba? Parang, hindi natural na you will have a concern for the poor, right? So, uh, I guess, an entrepreneurial mindset kasi uh, is one thing, but uh, engaging entrepreneurs and parabang coupling entrep the entrepreneurial mindset with uh, social values 
controversy is actually another aspect that needs to uh, be promoted among uh, students that are wanting to go into entrepreneurship. Uh, one of the things, uh, just to share with you, uh, we often talk about social entrepreneurship as the art of managing multiple bottom lines. Huh? Um, that it's actually, there's a social bottom line and there's a financial bottom line, right? And we all, always talk about the social bottom line in command, right? So it's social, it's what is driving in, an, in a social enterprise, what is driving the enterprise is the social objective, not the drive for profits or not the drive for financial gain. Financial sustainability uh, becomes a supportive, a supportive objective to the social objective, right? So if all businesses are actually wanting to serve society in a useful way, right? Um, then maybe we will have a better society. Um, parang, so people do not go into business because they want to become rich. Uh, and by the way, meron kasi ano eh, uh, the aspiration to become to become rich kasi is an aspiration that is uh, being born from you ano, uh, the current mindset that para bang ano ang value na pino promote natin among our our people is yet para bang ano if you're poor you need to become rich di ba? Uh, there's a strand of economics called ecological economics na and in ecological economics, it talks about three classes, three socio-ecological classes. The sustainers, the excluded, and the uh, and those who are over-consumers. So parang ecological economics doesn't talk about rich, middle class, and poor. Ecological economics talks about over-consumers, sustainers, and the excluded. So in ecological economics, the, 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 the vision is to make the excluded strive to become sustainers and to make the over-consumers also strive to become sustainers. It is not, uh, pag, pag kinon, kinon trust mo dun sa paradigm ng economics ng tinuturo and the values of, you know, the values of capitalism na tinuturo, na you, if you're poor, you need to become rich you have to uh, find a good job and you have to get into business to become rich. Uh, yung the aspiration is not to become part of the sustainer class. The aspiration is to become an over-consumer. <laughs> Alam mo yun? So, magkaiba yung, ano eh, magkaiba yung perspective na yan. So, tingin ko, one of the key things that we need to teach our 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 ano, our students yan, and would be entrepreneurs is to think about this paradigm. No? Ano ba yung paradigm na pinapaniwalaan nila? Uh, how do they view the world? If, if they talk about uh, aspirations, what is their aspiration? Yan, yung dalawang kinontrast ko, yun, I, I, ano eh, ecological economics I think is that uh, strand of economics that should be promoted more because it talks about integrating the value of um, development and environment, right? Uh, and it talks about a sustainer class rather than the promotion of becoming rich, yeah? becoming an over-consumer. Uh, so, yun yung, I guess, ano, um, in that sense, when you talk about mindsets, you need to talk about paradigms also. And you will need to talk about values in those ways, no? Because depending on your paradigm, ibang iba yung set of values mo. And I think um, uh, when you talk about one of the broadest, I would say, the, one of the broadest, I think, uh, concepts that could unite a lot of people. That's why you have the sustainable development goals, no? Is yung three aspects of sustainability. When you talk of sustainability, you should not just be talking about the integrity of environment and development, but you should be talking about equity, social equity, no? and you should be talking about um, quality growth. No? Yung tatlong, ano, so when you talk about sustainable development and sustainability, you're talking first and foremost about social equity, 
And social equity has many dimensions. Uh, there's the dimension not an equity between between classes, between generations, no? yung intergenerational equity, yung kay Brundtland na uh, yung rights of the current generation and the rights of future generations dapat pantay, right? So the reason why you shouldn't pollute now is because you should be protecting this for future generations, right? So yun yung intergenerational equity. But you also have equity between nations, equity between rural and urban, di ba? Equity, um, so, so parang social equity is, I think, a very important dimension when you talk about sustainability. It's not just the integrity of environment and development, where you cannot talk of development without talking about the environment and vice versa. But also, when you talk about growth, we should be talking about quality growth, quality that does not, that does not um, parang impact negatively on people and the environment, right? or that contributes to the well-being of people and that improves the capacity of the environment. Parang, so yung tatlong yun, eh, I think, when you talk about sustainable development, uh, kasi marami kasi when you talk about sustainable development, ang impression, ay, protection lang yan ng environment. But sa totoo lang, when you, sustainable development in its true meaning has these three dimensions that should be simultaneously be, be given attention. Social equity, the integrity of environment and development and quality growth. Okay, thank you, uh, Jirby. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, You're welcome, Pa. Uh, thank you. Uh, tawagin naman natin siguro si Christopher Bandoho. Uh, this is the on the differences of men and women in relation to uh, social enterprise. Uh, Chris. Thank you, sir, Franz. Uh, good morning, po, Prof. Nakanai. So maybe this is also related to the question of values. And uh, aside from what I know that uh, uh, the concern for women is also part of the, uh, the SDG. I, may, I, I am also interested to know whether you come across this comparison of sort between the difference of between men and women in terms of handling yung, yung ating, uh, uh, social enterprises. The specific question is what differences do women have compared to men when it comes to social enterprise value chain interventions? Does it affirm the conclusion that it is more sustainable to invest in women on matters relating to socioeconomic development? That's a very good question because um, it actually seems to pit men versus women, right? Mm -hmm. But sa totoo lang, the reason why in agricultural value chain development, uh, and you, uh, you probably read already the benchmarks, no? which is very strong on women's economic yeah. empowerment. Kailang pag-usapan natin, ano ba yung sitwasyon ngayon? Ano ba yung uh, prevailing situation? Ang problema kasi is that when you say farmer, kahit sa sa'yo, Chris, when you say farmer, fisher, what comes to mind? Is it a man or a woman? Man. Man. Mm. Diba? So, ang, ang problema kasi ngayon is that women are invisible even if they're doing a lot of work, right? So parang, kung titignan mo yung agricultural value chains, kung imamapa mo yung mga, sino yung gumagawa ng ano sa farm, maraming roles ang ginagampanan ng woman. Pero ang problema, appendage lang siya. Tinitignan siya ng society na appendage lang siya ng lalaki. Hindi siya nire-recognize. Invisible siya. Uh, kung minsan, ini-engage siya. Pag ini-engage siya, yung sweldo niya mas mababa sa lalaki. Kahit ngayon sa mga agricultural communities, when you hire agricultural workers, mas mababa ang bayad sa babae kaysa sa lalaki. No? So, at the same time, when you talk about engaging women, marami namang well-meaning and interventions na nag-engage ng mga kawimenan. No? Pero sa totoo lang, when they engage women, ang women kasi are in charge of the home, right? They actually have the burden of having to care for children, having to take care of the family, yeah? And so when you try to engage them in economic activities without addressing this burden, no? this unpaid care work na burden of women, then you're actually burdening them even more. Yeah. Yeah? So parang ito yung mga reality na pinag-uusapan natin. So parang when we talk about women's economic empowerment and agricultural value chains, we're not saying that we should only give attention to women. What we're saying is women should have equal rights and equal opportunities and should be given the support they need 
in order for them to become stakeholders in agricultural value chains and to partake in the benefits of agricultural value chain development. Ngayon, in the reason why kailangan bigyan ng specific attention yung women is because ganyan ang baseline. The baseline kasi is invisible sila, unrecognized, underpaid, exploited, and if they're engaged, hindi sila natutulungan to actually uh, address yung unpaid care work. No? Yung unpaid care work is a very serious problem with interventions that engage women. Kasi, for example, we studied we studied a, an agricultural value chain intervention in Indonesia. No? And doon sa Indonesia, um, yung mga kababaihan na in-involve, they were, uh, ano to, coconut sap sugar. No? Uh, yung, yung ano, yung nagkukuk sila ng coconut sap sugar. So the, the women were actually able to contribute up to 50% of the household income because they were able to engage in the economic livelihood of uh, making organic coconut sap sugar, all right? Uh, pero, nung pinag-aralan namin yung time and motion ng mga kababaihan before and after the intervention, we found out that women were only sleeping for four hours. No? Ang, ang ibig sabihin, um, kasi ang nangyari is hindi naman binigyan ng attention yung mga unpaid care work responsibilities ng kababaihan and they were cooking coconut sap sugar at night. And then they were not sleeping enough already. And over time, magkakaroon ng health problems and issues ang women. No? So parang, what I'm just saying is, uh, I think the reason why we need to focus on women's economic empowerment is to make sure that in the process of value chain development, we're able to engage women and men effectively together. Because it's also when women and men are effectively engaged that we have a better life for the family, diba? But in the process, we need to address what we call systemic barriers. What are these systemic barriers? For example, yung pagtingin na ang kababaihan ay dapat siya lang ang, siya lang ang nagtatrabaho sa bahay. Huh? Uh, or uh, the idea that women have to find a way to take care of their children. You just got, have to get them involved in economic activity. I mean, that's not the way to go. So for example, social enterprises that have effectively engaged women have actually created uh, daycare centers so that when the women are working, they're the, the, children, no? the children are actually cared for while they are working. And then uh, in the case of alter trade, no? isa, sa mga, isa sa mga ginawa ng alter trade when they actually started to organize in the sugar, hashen, uh, the sugar workers, Turned agrarian reform beneficiaries. Alam mo isa sa mga pinakaginawa nila is to make a policy that women and men are going to be paid equal, ba? Ganon. So it's not really uh, saying that men should not be involved. We're saying women and men need to be given equal rights and opportunities, and women need to be assisted in terms of addressing the systemic barriers that impede your participation nila as actors in value chains. And part of those systemic systemic um, barriers have to do with cultural barriers, with organizational barriers, with barriers that have to do with access to resources also. Kasi halimbawa, uh, ngayon, no? um, and this is actually related to another question, we've found that in the Asia, in, in ASEAN, no? in the ASEAN region, isa sa mga best, best practices sa mga women's economic empowerment ay sa Pilipinas nakikita. Kasi at the very least in the Philippines, in a situation where hindi pa ganun ka, kalinaw or wala pang mga legal instruments recognizing ownership of women of land. Dito sa Pilipinas, women are already recognized as agrarian reform beneficiaries. No? Hindi na gaya dati na wala silang right to own land. But uh, para bang kung dati, when you are a woman, you need to have a co-maker na yung husband mo. Naman? hindi ka po pwedeng umutang na walang permission yung husband mo. Ganyan. It's, it has changed. No? Marami nang nagbago in terms of ano. Because also, uh, na, na mainstream na yung gender and development perspectives no? uh, sa, buong, ano, sa buong framing ng uh, development goals ng even government agencies. No? So, uh, but of course, cultural barriers are bigger. Kasi kahit na yung mga legal barriers, wala na, right? 
yung culture kasi ang hirap baguhin, right? And those cultural barriers stay with us for a long time. So even now, even as we're saying that women and men should have equal opportunities in agriculture and they're both actors in agricultural value chains, pag sinabi mong farmer, lalaki pa rin. Fisher, lalaki pa rin ang pumapasok sa utak ng mga tao. Diba? So it's in that context that the, the framing of agricultural value chain interventions should be women-friendly. Not because we want women-only interventions. Hindi ganon. Kundi, we want um, men and women to have equal rights and opportunities as well as we address the systemic barriers that prevent women from um, participating actively in agricultural value chains and parang, um, parang in families actually are able to be cared for <laughs> na, uh, even as women are engaged in agricultural value chains. Kasi parang may danger din nun eh. And the way that, is, that it's resolved, halimbawa sa alter trade, no? kwento ko lang sa inyo to. Dun sa alter trade, uh, when we were studying kung ano yung nangyari na because gender and development was integrated as part of their, ano ba, part of their education and training programs, ganyan, and then they they actually made sure that their policies were gender fair. Uh, whenever they have trainings, it's equal opportunities for men and women, ganyan. Over time, um, no, ang nangyari is the men themselves were actually already actors who were gender fair rin yung pagtingin nila. No? So for example, in the household, they share in the household work. No? So parang ang isang, um, nung I, I did my PhD kasi when, uh, when I did my PhD, alter trade was one of the cases I studied. No? And naka heartwarming yung ano. Isa sa mga na-find out namin doon sa mga communities is parang siyempre habang nagkakaroon ng dividends yung mga tao, no? sa kahabang tumataas yung income na nakukuha nila, bumibili sila ng household appliances. Uh, guess kung ano yung the first household appliance na binili ng mga tao when they got their dividends was una, re- refrigerator. Siyempre, alam naman natin kung bakit, right? Dahil yung refrigerator helps you to actually uh, store food, no? Na hindi ka kailangan mag-market araw-araw, right? But guess what the second one was? Uh, the second one was washing machine. And the reason why they wanted washing machines is because both men and women were already washing clothes, no? And parabang, they wanted it to they wanted to make it easier for both men and women to wash clothes. So kaya washing machine was in the list of you and as they as they improve their quality of life, nagkaroon ng parang sabay-sabay kasi ang gagawin nila, isang truck sila pupunta sila sa bayan para bumili ng mga appliances after makuha nila yung dividends, no? Babalik sila. Lahat sila may washing machine, <laughs> ganun ba? So parang I'm just saying na uh, when you talk about uh, improving women's conditions no? and uh, women's economic empowerment, it includes all these things. No? Parang uh, having, addressing systemic barriers at the cultural level, at the organizational level. So that what Alter Trade did was make policies. At the same time, they also addressed yung gender sensitivity sessions kung saan yung mga kalalakihan naging very sensitive na sa mga issues ng kababaihan, ganyan. They started to share in household work. So that during the pandemic, alam mo, we studied how, we, we studied the status of women during the pandemic in these communities kung saan may gender and development orientation. Alam mo, hindi nahirapan ng mga kababaihan kasi kahit na dalawa sila nasa bahay, nagtutulungan sila. Hindi gaya dun sa mga mga stakeholders na kababaihan na walang social enterprise na uh, may gender orientation. No? Doon, mahirapan talaga ang mga kababaihan kasi sila lang, sila ang in charge sa pag-take care ng family during the pandemic. No? So I guess I'm saying that women's economic empowerment is, is, will improve not only the welfare and the rights of women, but it will also improve the rights and welfare of the family no? uh, as a whole. So we're not, again, we're not uh, advancing women-only interventions. We're advancing the equal opportunities for women and men. And sometimes, women-only interventions are important. Kasi kung minsan, you, kung if you have limited resources, you want to impact on the women specifically, so you create an intervention that is just addressing women, right? Uh, you, you engaging women. Pero 
for the most part, most agricultural value chain interventions are actually interventions that address women and men producers simultaneously. So we just give emphasis to women because the situation ngayon is they're invisible, they're underpaid, and they're exploited and unrecognized. Maraming salamat po, Sir Chris. Maraming salamat po, uh, Ma'am Lisa. Na, Nakarelate kami ni partner doon, no? lalong-lalong na sa usapin ng paglalaba. <laughs> anyway, okay. uh, nabanggit po yung uh, konteksto naman po ng agrikultura. Siguro po uh, marapat tawagin natin si Enrique. Kung nadyan po si Sir Enrique, you can address the question po. The one which starts with the ideally, I also believe. Okay. Uh, professor, I also believe that social enterprises enable small producers in ag ag uh, agriculture value chains to increase their productivity and incomes. Nang tanong ko po, uh, nito ay based from my personal experience, seeing the plight of our farmers, wherein they do more of the tedious job from land telting until harvesting. Yung produkto nila po, ang dami na pong dinadaan ng kamay. Ang dami ng add-ons. Imagine from farm, for example, it's only 30 pesos. Then pagpunta dun sa marketplace, it's doubled. Now, ano po ba talaga ang tama? Kasi our LGU has done nothing to resolve this issue. Nakakaawa kasi yung mga farmers, ma'am. That's a very relevant question, especially that we are promoting... Um, a set of benchmarks for transformational partnerships and women's economic empowerment in agricultural value chains. Why am I referring to that? No? Uh, I, yung second reading ninyo was about these benchmarks, no? a pathway to sustainability. And kaya, kaya ko nire-relate doon is that um, the benchmarks talk about ano ba yung agricultural value chain interventions na nakakatulong talaga sa pag-improve ng lives of women and men, small producers, and their families. No? And it identifies eight, no? eight intervention areas. And um, ang benchmark number two has to do with uh, engaging them, not only as small producers, but moving them up the value chain so that they are actually able to reap a more substantive share of value from the value chain. What, am I, how, what, am, what do I mean by this? Balikan ko lang yung usapan tungkol sa kape. No? Um, yung intervention ng social enterprise sa kape, ang ginawa niya, tinulungan niya yung mga, mga coffee farmers na hindi lang mag-produce ng green coffee beans. Tinulungan niya yung mga coffee farmers para sila mismo ang magmay-are ng coffee processing at magmay-are ng uh, brand ng kape na ititinda sa merkado. Yun yung ibig natin sabihin that uh, agricultural value chain intervention should over time assist small producers to get a more substantive value, share of value from the agricultural value chain intervention. In the case of Alter, uh, in the case of Bote Central, yung buong value chain na to, yung mga, val yung mga coffee farmers who were engaged in community-based coffee enterprises under the Philippine Coffee Alliance, 100% of the share of value created in the value chain pumupunta sa farmer. Unlike doon sa isang corporate value chain, no? na ang farmers are forever made coffee, green coffee bean producers. Diba? Or even the raw, the raw cherries, right? And then the green coffee beans. Na parang Yung, nag, yung, yung nakikinabang sa processing, yung nakikinabang sa marketing and branding ng coffee, yun ang malaking kumpanya. So, in, show, uh, see these two contrasting perspectives. No? Yung isa, inaddress yung need for farmers to get a more substantive share of value. Yung isa, they relegated them to becoming coffee, green coffee bean producers forever. Diba? So, Ang sinasabi natin, and I think what your LGU needs would be an orientation about what value chain interventions actually make a difference on the lives of women and men small scale producers. So, pin pinupromote namin ngayon yung benchmarks. No? At sabi ko nga, walo yan, but one of the, the number, the second benchmark is about increasing the share of value of the farmers 
of the small producers from the value chain intervention. So parang um, yun yung makakatulong talaga sa mga farmers. So as you said, for most agricultural value chain interventions, hindi ito nangyayari. Di ba? Nangyayari, relegated sa production lang yung farmers, right? At yung problema pa dun, dun sa trading, binabarat sila ng trader, di ba? So, um, what, what, what's needed is for, for the uh, a value chain intervention that would help the farmers for them to control the trading of their product, right? And even the processing and the marketing of the finished product. Yun yung parang ideal, no? And sa totoo lang, yung Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Bill that is pending in Congress, it promotes um, the unit of planning na in the economic subsectors as units of planning. Anong ibig sabihin nito? In the same way na yung DPI, di ba, yung Department of Trade and Industry, they always talk about strategic industries, na yung gobyerno mag invest dito sa strategic industries na to, di ba? Ang nag, nakikinabang doon sa mga strategic industries na dinidefine ng DPI every year is actually the big companies. Na ang nangyayari, yung mga small producers become small producers forever lang. No? Habang much of the wealth kasi is created in the processing and the marketing. Eh. Alright? So parang yung share of the farmer for, during the processing and the marketing the faces no, of the agricultural value chain is talagang wala. Ang pinupuntahan nun yung big company. So what we are proposing in the Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Bill is that yung, kung ano man yung, um, yung government agency that would be created, kasi there's a proposal to create a, a program, a, poverty, a National Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Program, mag identify ng strategic economic subsectors where the poor are concentrated and where they could be major players. Tapos magbubuhos ng resources yung gobyerno dito sa mga uh, sa economic subsectors na to. Strategic economic subsectors where the poor are concentrated and where they could be major players. And if you think about moving them up the value chain in these economic subsectors, ang laki ng difference na mangyayari sa agricultural value chain uh, intervention sa Pilipinas. No? So, malaki yung inaasahan sana namin na mapasa yung poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship bill para magkaroon ng legal basis for recognizing social enterprises and for government to really provide resources to support social entrepreneurship as a as a strategy for poverty reduction at ito yung ino-offer na isang strategy no doon sa bill itself and i hope na uh, that can really happen so okay. para ma- mabago yung sitwasyon ngayon kung saan yung mga farmers are actually relegated to becoming, you know, producers forever and price takers. Ang tawag namin sa kanila ngayon, they're price takers. They, they, they actually follow the price dictated by the trader, di ba? So, parang, if you move up the value chain, the first, the first, uh, ano kasi, yung first na pwede mong i-take over na function sa value chain is uh, trading, right? So, you actually consolidate and trade as a group right hindi as individual farmers so if you're able to um, consolidate and trade as a group you get a better price yeah because you're able to bargain a better price but if you actually don't only trade but you actually process also then you have a better share of the value in the value chain so ganun siguro yung ano, perspective so i would propose na uh, well Meron kasing, yung Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Coalition, meron siyang localization program or localization strategy kung saan pinopromote yung Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship among LGUs. No? So, if you're wanting to uh, get your LGU involved in this and you are wanting to be a factor in that process, you can get in touch with the Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Coalition and then we can actually give you a copy of the bill that can be translated into a local legislation that the that the local government uh, the local development council and the sangguni ang bayan and the sangguni ang panlalawigan can actually enact into law as well at the local level okay thank you enrique thank you ma'am ma'am uh, short reply dito sa question na to
kung ganun po kaganda yung ano yung poverty reduction for social entrepreneurship uh, bill ano po yung estado niya ngayon sa sa kongreso short yeah. reply lang po ano po ang pakiramdam niyo sino yung nag-sponsor nito may pag-asa po ba to <laughs> yeah um tingin ko mas may pag-asa ngayon kesa dati no kasi uh, dati 2012 namin to sinimulan no nung 2012 nung sinimulan namin yung paglobby parang government did not have any idea about what social enterprises are and i think we have invested over time no, in educating our legislators or government officials yan, about what social enterprises are and i think we've succeeded in at least changing some mindsets right so but ang problema pa rin is that um, in, in both houses of congress it's not so much na hindi nila sinusuportahan pero parang yung priorities hindi pumapasok sa priority bills na gusto nilang sponsor right so parang in the in the house of representatives may mga ilang champions uh, pero ano uh, parang wala pang critical mass para yung bill ay pwede ipasa no? doon sa senate may apat na senators um, senator um, Coco Pimentel Subiri uh, sino pa ba? Uh, Ho, Senator Ho, at saka uh, sino pa ba yung isa? Ah, Angara. We were able to convince them to file already um, yung bill. No? Pero syempre, uh, hindi lahat ng senators ay supportive pa rin. One of the key senators nga na medyo kinu-question niya yung need for a bill is actually the same senator who questioned about agriculture. No? So parang <laughs> um, um, I think talagang ano our our Congress that's one of the issues I think of our political system. No? Um, yung Congress the, the the Congress and government are full of people. Uh, hindi ko sinasabing lahat, no? But there are, it's full of people who actually have vested interests and um, hindi nila parang ano hindi nila priority yung poverty reduction, right? So parang, I think um, we could still do something about it though because ngayon, um, with Secretary Dar in the Department of Agri Agriculture, tingin ko mas malaki yung focus on agriculture that is not corporate-led. Uh, he's actually uh, promoting a vision of a, a, ano parang of a resilient agriculture that is uh, founded on prosperous farmers and fishers. No? It's the first time that you will have a DA that actually talks about that. And he's not only talking about uh, production of agricultural products, but he's now talking about agricultural value chains. Kasi dati-dati, pag nag-uusap ng agriculture, uh, production lang. No? Pag nag-usap na ng value chain, DTI na yan. No? Sa ngayon, in-embrace ni Secretary Dar yung agricultural value chain development as an important um, mandate of the Department of Agriculture. So parang tingin ko, um, mas, uh, mas malaki yung mas malaki yung ano, mas malaki yung chances na magkaroon ng attention sa agriculture. I was just saying that because there was another question related to agriculture in the questions that were given to me. But going back to your question on on the situation of the poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship bill, uh, if you are interested, <laughs> ako, ano na, this is the advocate in me already, if you're interested to help the poverty reduction through social entrepreneurship coalition to pass the bill, one of the things that the Poverty Reduction Through Social Entrepreneurship Coalition is doing is to ask all the stakeholders to actually write their respective Congress women and men para sila ay mag-sponsor ng bill. So meron kaming, meron kaming pro forma letter at meron din kaming pro forma na, ah, hindi pro forma, may stakeholders version ng tawag na bill na ready-made na kailangan na lang sponsor nila dun sa Congress. No? So if any of you, you're, you're coming from different parts of the country, each of you, I think, um, I hope that after this session, will become interested in social entrepreneurship as a strategy for poverty reduction. And if you're wanting to be involved in the lobby for the bill, uh, one of the simple things that you can actually help to do 
is to engage in a process of writing Congress women and men so that they will actually uh, sponsor the bill in Congress. No? So, halimbawa, you can, as professors, or parabang in behalf of organizations, or you can uh, maybe ask local organizations to write your respective Congress women and men so that they will sponsor the bill. No? So, uh, unfortunately, mga siguro we have around 12 Congress women and men na nag-sponsor na ng bill, pero di ba, we have 200, how many? 276 ba? Uh, members of the lower house. So, ang dami pang hindi nag-sponsor ng bill. So, if you if you could imagine a situation where yung, ano, our respective Congress women and men in our various districts, yeah, uh, in your various districts, sponsor the bill. Ang laking tulong mo. Siguro, uh, partner, hinga natin si Ma'am Marie, uh, Ma'am Lisa po ng kopya po sa nanon para ma-distribute ah. po ng aming secretariat uh, for everyone who's interested po. Sige. What we will do is we will not only provide you a copy of the bill, we will also provide you a copy of the pro forma letter. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, we can also provide you the contact address of the Poverty Reduction to Social Entrepreneurship Coalition Secretariat. Huh? Salamat po. Uh, meron ka pang follow-up uh, question, uh, partner? Partner, maybe we can proceed uh, to the next question. Oh, uh, kaya lang, uh, pagpaumanhin ng lahat, hindi natin ma-cover yung mga lahat ng katanungan. Just a time check, it's 11.29. Siguro we can have uh, last two questions. Last two questions. Uh, may we call on po um, si uh, 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 Sir Gilmore to address the question po to uh, Ma'am Lisa. Sir Gilmore, are you there? Hello, uh, good morning po. Go ahead po. Uh, yun po, uh, I would just like to ask, yan, yan na po, yan na po, Ms. Mayor, how far have we reached and um, what have we done yeah, in uh, to reduce poverty through social entrepreneurship uh, with the help of course of the government and nabanggit niya na nga po niya mayroong mga bills na pinapasa na, na uh, gusto natin mapasa no? yun po uh, well um, the, yung role kasi ng social enterprises in poverty reduction uh, na prove na kasi nga na it was it's through social entrepreneurship interventions that poverty reduction has happened in specific areas, right? And that's the reason why we want to mainstream it as a strategy so that government can actually provide the enabling environment and the support needed for social entrepreneurship to be a bigger strategy, to be a mainstream strategy, a major strategy of government. No, uh, so uh, but parang that's I think the biggest. Thing that we are actually um, doing to promote uh, social entrepreneurship uh, as a strategy for poverty reduction. Di ba nagbanggit na naman ako ng mga examples of social enterprises and how they have addressed poverty. And um, it's the success of the social enterprises nga in addressing poverty that became the inspiration for the bill. So uh, we can, you can, I can show you other studies. Because, for example, in 2015, we made a study of 32 social enterprises coming from different uh, economic subsectors and different types of social enterprises. Because there are social enterprises na cooperatives, there are social enterprises na foundations, there are social enterprises na corporate uh, ang form, pero ano? Um, social mission driven siya. Meron din mga social enterprises na um, associations ang form. Uh, parang they come in different forms and, si forms and sizes. But um, parang ang, ang uh, the hmm, I lost my train of thought. We, uh, we were talking about sorry, um, may distraction akong na ano dito. But what was what, what, what were we discussing? Pasensya na. We were talking about the poverty uh, reduction. How, how far? How far yeah. have we been in poverty? Yeah. Yeah. Reducing poverty. Yeah. So yung yung how far kasi, uh, yung how far, uh, sabi ko nga, 
uh, packets yung successes ng social enterprises, di ba? But it is those packets of success that inspired the bill to become a mainstream strategy of government, right? So, nandun tayo ngayon, no? We have success stories in different packets uh, showing poverty reduction successfully happening in different parts. Uh, for example, I would just add siguro para lang madagdagan yung examples, no? Yung persons with disability, malaki yung naging role ng social enterprises sa pag-angat ng kabuhayan ng mga persons with disability na nandun sa National Federation of Cooperatives of Persons with Disability, no? uh, particularly when they were engaged in um, the production of um, school chairs as well as yung tahanang walang hagdan in the production of educational toys, no? Uh, being supplied to the department to the Department of Education, um, but unlocking too long sa kabuhayan nila, no, that they were able to actually um, get um, regular income coming from the social enterprises of Tahanang Walang Hagdan and the National Federation of Co-ops of Persons with Disability. So, as I said, ano yan eh, packets yan of success, and those packets became the inspiration for the bill that we are mainstreaming. So we're hoping that this will become a mainstream strategy so that it can really create overall impact on our economy. Yeah. So unless and until that happens, I'm afraid social enterprises can only do so much, right? Salamat po, Ma'am Lisa. Uh, Sir Gilmore, salamat din po. So for our last um, question, um, may we call on to Sir Richard of uh, Pamantasan ng Lunsod ng Pasig? Go ahead po, Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I have to read here. Uh, good morning, Dr. Dakanay. Uh, I have here a very uh, important question. Firstly, uh, I have to, to scroll down na muna. Okay, this one. How can social uh, enterprise become viable agenda especially in this pandemic when people are struggling hard to meet both ends then uh, follow up does meeting the basic needs empower people to just simply live and survive in these difficult and trying times yeah um you see it's precisely uh, why we need to mainstream social entrepreneurship uh, more urgently now because social enterprises are social mission driven, right? Because they're social mission driven, they're committed to engaging in enterprises that would assist the recovery and the building back better, that would engage the poor you know, and the marginalized. So, parang, yes, in meeting basic needs, yes. Parang, para ano ba? Uh, there are aspects kasi of the economy that should be concerned with the meeting of basic needs of people, right? And it's social enterprises that are in a good position to do that. So parang, uh, uh, siguro, uh, hindi, um, if, if we are to use a term that was used earlier, yung um, meeting the basic needs will not prevent the successful setting up of enterprises. If they are social enterprises, they will, the meeting of basic needs is precisely what will spur the development and growth of social enterprises because social enterprises are there to meet the needs of poverty and mar poor and marginalized people, right? So um, that's precisely why in the social enterprise action research that we did, one of the major recommendations is actually the development of new social enterprises to actually provide livelihoods and sustainable livelihoods and decent work to all the many unemployed that have been, uh, you know, that have lost their jobs because of the pandemic. And we're also pro proposing yung social enterprise recovery fund so that a social enterprise recovery fund could assist the social enterprises that were affected by the pandemic to, you know, um, to rejuvenate themselves, to become, to become part of the process of recovery and building back fairer. No? So, um, sa totoo lang, let me just give you an example related to food security. No? Um, everybody now is concerned about food security. 
And not at any time, our social enterprises appreciated more than before in relation to food security. Why? Because before, when you talk of food security, people talk about purchasing power and people buying in the grocery, right? But now, what are people talking about? Food security is about farmers and fishers growing their food, diba? And making themselves uh, making themselves sufficient, right? Um, and kausap uh, ko lang yung harvest owner lang harvest. It's a it's a it's a big company involved in agriculture, no? Um, interesado yung agricultural com- company na to to work with social enterprises so that yung food miles, alam niyo food miles, yung number of miles that, you, that food travels, no? Can be shortened. For example, vegetables, di ba? Yung vegetables ng Baguio, kailangan mag-travel pa all the way to Manila in order for the vegetables to actually reach Manila, right? Ang, ang concept, ang pinag-usapan namin na concept na cooperation between their company and social enterprises is if if company uh, if social enterprises can actually uh, be mobilized to uh, to produce and to uh, to produce and sell vegetables dun sa periphery so for example Metro Davao Metro Manila tapos yung Metro Cagayan ganyan lahat ng yan yung mga peripheral communities are surrounding them sila yung magpo-produce ng vegetables na kailangan ng mga metro di ba but that's just one part of the part of the solution for food security kasi meron din namang yung food secure communities dun sa rural areas themselves di ba it's it's ironic that farmers are going hungry when they have land right Parang, that, that's because agricultural value chains are focused on single crops, right? So, ang sinasabi natin is, ngayon, may appreciation na ang kailangan para maging food secure, magtanim para sa kakainin, right? And I think uh, we have been, uh, even alter trade as a um, social enterprise, that's what they did when they actually intervened in the sugar haciendas, no? They actually introduced diversification of crops and income sources. And the main impetus was to ensure food security for the small producers. So going back to the benchmarks that we were talking about, one of the benchmarks is actually about building resilience and food security. Meaning to say, uh, kahit na anong agricultural value chain ka involved, kailangan, kung kumpanya ka involved in agricultural value chain development, you must invest in the food security of your small producers as part of your corporate social responsibility. You know? So, parang um, all of these kasi are important, um, important developments. So, uh, as a response to your question on uh, the situation now, I think because People now are more conscious of the need for community-based approaches. Uh, they're more conscious of shorter food miles. They're more conscious of um, parang food security and local economy building. Parang mas conducive actually yung environment for social enterprise development to happen. No? So uh, I think the pandemic has actually created a situation where mas mata, ma, mas malaki yung appreciation especially ng government agencies for social enterprises now than before and that's the reason why we believe that passing the bill during the next two years is actually more possible now than before um, at the same time uh, we have set up uh, mga mga platforms so yung we live food platform na pinag na binanggit ni Rochi kanina no yung women's empowerment livelihood and food platform platform yon where we are trying to bring together government social enterprises and the corporate sector to work together so that we can have more sustainable value chain development practices that would ensure food security resilience increasing the share of value of uh, producer communities and all the things that are contained in the benchmarks no so parang uh, ngayon tingin ko maganda yung maganda yung ano pagreceive ng maraming agencies like when we were talking to the DTI um, yung Department of Trade and Industry dati dati hindi kami masyadong pinapansin ng DTI no uh, nung nagdialog kami after the pandemic with them they were actually interested 
to work with us so that they we they can start identifying social enterprises from among the SMEs na ka, katul, no, ka work nila in the provinces and municipalities where DTI operates. Why? Because ngayon ang tanong sa kanila, how are you helping farmers? How are you helping OFWs? How are you helping indigenous people? No? Nagkaroon ng awareness yung government agencies that they are not just government agencies uh, with mandates to, in the case of DTI, to make uh, businesses uh, strive. No? But in the final analysis, there are government agencies that should be contributing to the welfare and the benefits of the marginalized and poorer segments of the population. No? So, parang mas maganda siguro yung context ngayon, in that context, uh, in that sense ng uh, pag-promote ng social enterprise development. And there's more, um, as a, just as a last point, there are more businesses and more government agencies that appreciate social enterprise development now than before. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Richard. So uh, it's almost uh, 12 o'clock. So uh, marami po po tayong questions, kaya lang wala tayo talagang time. Uh, maybe we'll just ask Ma'am Lisa to address them by uh, email, Ma'am. Okay lang po ba? Through writing, kung uh, pwedeng sagutin yung ilang mga tanong. Uh, yeah, thank you po. Uh, we go now, uh, partner, to our last question. Medyo light lang siguro yung question natin kay Ma'am. Uh, uh, Ma'am, allow us, no, the, the, the final question is, uh, ano po yung tatlong pinakamahalaga palagay niyo po at saka pinaka-influence, no? influential books for you of all time at saka bakit po? <laughs> yeah. Um, yung isa is yung pay now, not later. Uh, I was talking to you about yung thought leader din kasi si Isagani Serrano dun, dun sa... Uh, sustainable development discourse. No? Uh, he died in 2019, but um, that made a big impact on me because uh, it talk, it's actually a collection of essays on environment and development uh, that was published in 1992. No? And the reason why it made a big impact on me is that it talks about sustainable development and how uh, sustainable development strategies can actually be pursued in a country like the Philippines. Um, and it talks about yung pay now, not later, kasi ang ibig sabihin, do not discount uh, the environment and social goals today. Uh, uh, para bang when you are actually doing, you're engaged in economic activities, you should be paying the social and environmental costs now, not later. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng title. No? So that was one of the books that really... Um, parang ano, uh, the message was future generations should not be made to pay for the sins of the current generation. Yun yung sabi ng book. Um, so it, it was a book about um, sustainable development and the three elements that I was talking about. Actually, I called that those three elements of sustainable development from this book. Yung social equity, the integrity of environment and development and quality growth. No? Yun three elements man, should be present for sustainable development to happen. Um, the other book that I remember made an impact on me is uh, Yung Development as Freedom, ni Amar Chasen, uh, which was published in 1999 because he was talking about the multidimensional approach to poverty. Na poverty, uh, yung sinasabi ko kanina, na poverty is not just low income, but is uh, capability deprivation. And so in order for you to solve poverty, you need to build the capability of people and communities to, um, to actually solve their problems and to control their lives. Yeah? So that parang poverty reduction is about the empowerment of people. No? And um, when you talk about empowerment, um, again, yung empowerment, na ang pinag-usapan natin ay hindi lamang um, you know, control of resources and control of decision-making processes, but the capability to use the resources and the decision-making processes effectively, efficiently, and sustainably. Um, 
And then the other book I would I would ano, um, mention would be yung ecological economics. May eco- ecological economics uh, book that was published, uh, authored by Daly, Herman Daly, and in 2004, but it was, it was republished in 2011. And as I was explaining to you, uh, it introduces a strand of economics that internalizes social and environmental costs. Yeah, na you uh, you uh, it actually talks about. I was telling you about the the ano, ecological economics because ang nag introduce ng um, yung three socio ecological classes na pinag-usapan natin kanina, na the, the the aspiration should be towards becoming part of the sustainer class and not to be over consumers, right? Um, parang yun yung inspiration behind that is actually ecological economics, and uh, yun yung those are three books I can mention. Uh, there are many books actually that influenced me, but <laughs> for purposes of this discussion, siguro I can just mention these three. Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Ma'am Lisa, uh, partner. I guess. Uh, uh, Yes. This is We have to wrap it up. Uh, it's almost 12 o'clock. Uh, Ma'am uh, Lisa, we really take this opportunity to thank you. Uh, you didn't only share your insights and experiences. Actually, uh, most importantly, uh, you shared to us your conviction, your passion, and your commitment to social entrepreneurship, and we are really thankful for it. Uh, for us, we are from the philosophy field from the philosophy department. Uh, most of us are teaching philosophy. We are philosophy students, teachers, and researchers. But uh, this, I think what you have shared with us is an opportunity for us to do further philosophical ruminations and probably pushing the boundaries of moral questions and problems. That's why really we are, we, are, we do not regret that we entitled this series, Ethics in Action. You really embody uh, ethics in action, uh, Ma'am Lisa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So at this point, maybe we'll call uh, uh, Rainier. Amago uh, yan, Sir Franz, siguro in behalf po ng uh, department, uh, Department of Philosophy, tsaka po ng uh, UST, uh, taos pusong pasasalamat po namin. Napakarami po namin uh, Natutunan. Uh, the next step is uh, what to do with those. I think that's the more important question here. Yun, hindi ako makanda o gaga pagsulat, basensya na kaya nawawala din ako minsan. Uh, taking down notes. And again, maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Ma'am Lisa. At sa mga sender po natin ng mga katanungan. Uh, Sir Franz? We'll wait for the, ano, Ma'am Lisa, we'll wait for, your, uh, for the bill. For the... Uh, Yun, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, and maybe if you are one, uh, just to plug, <laughs> pwede mag-plug. Kasi, yes. uh, di ba, I gave you one of the readings, yung tungkol sa yung social, enter- yung unang reading about social enterprises uh, as game changers. Yan. Yes, uh, yes. The article, that article, that book chapter is going to be published in a book that Ateneo will launch on November 30. So yung launch is at 10 to 11.30. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe if you're interested, I can give you also details of the book launch. And the reason why I'm plugging that is because if you're interested in social enterprise, maybe that's a book that you can actually uh, parang get access to because it's, it will be published online. So I think uh, it's something that you can easily access. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you for the info. Thank you. So uh, at this point, maybe we'll call uh, Rainier for... Uh, the final announcement, final reminders for our participants. Okay, sir. Apo. So, thank you po, uh, Dr. Franz, Dr. Rochi, and uh, Dr. Lisa Dakanay. Um, here are some reminders po for the session um, next week. So, firstly, yung submission po ng thought piece, and this would be essentially a reaction, comment, critique of the thoughts of Dr. Lisa M. Dakanay. Um, guidelines, 500 to 600 words written in English or Filipino. The deadline of submission will be on Friday, 20 November 2020. So, once again, the link to the submission form will, will be sent via the email list. 
Um, the next session will be on ethics in journalism and it will feature Ms. Malu Mangahas of the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. And that session will take place once again via Zoom uh, next Saturday, 21 November 2020 uh, from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Again, please be reminded to submit your questions for the next speaker on or before Wednesday, 18 November 2020. And the link to the submission form will be sent via the email list. As with the session, you are expected to have read and uh, you have read the required readings as you join the uh, session next week. So, yun lang po. And then, uh, dagdag ko lang po kung meron po kayong call for donations or fundraising drive, um, you may likewise send it to us so, you, so we may help you share it as well. Maraming salamat po. By, by the way, partner, mabanggit ko lang, no? si Ma'am Lisa is also instrumental sa... Uh, Ah uh, kaya uh, susunod nating speaker no kaya uh, kay Ma'am Majong po as she was there uh, actually when we were contacting and she's the one actually who who led us uh for for that ano po uh, pagkakataon. Again Ma'am, maraming maraming salamat po. So thank you po. Thank you. See you next week. Ma'am Lisa will just uh, message you. Okay. Ingat thank po. You very Ingat. Much. Okay. Bye. Bye everyone. Salamat po. Thank you very much. Sige po.